The following is a presentation of R3 Productions. Tonight's outcome carries extremely different weights for these two opponents. For one, a chance to continue the season and continue to build upon what has turned into one of the top 30 4A programs in the state. For the other, tonight marks a chance to snap a streak, to accomplish something that hasn't been accomplished in nearly a decade, to erase all the negatives from the season at hand, and most importantly, to withhold the postseason from their biggest, most hated foe. A win for the boys in orange tonight guarantees this is the end of the road for their crosstown rivals. It won't be easy, and only a select few believe it's achievable, but this is in fact why the game is played. Welcome to the season finale of Fuqua Verena High School football. There's no tomorrow. Empty the tank. It's the Mustangs and the Bengals live from Fuqua Verena High School. The Bengal R3 Sports Network is on the air. Fuqua Verena High School football on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. It's presented by Krista Absure and the Absure Realty Group. This will be a handoff. Stewart got a blocker. Has another man in front of him. Breaks another one. He's got the touchdown as a defender comes in late. To be a lead blocker for Carrington. Carrington gets stood up and look at that. A whole host of Bengals coming in. Welcome into Bengal Gang Day presented by the Aviator Smokehouse. It's time to get you ready for tonight's matchup. Keeper, Uzandu, look at the speed. Wow. Pistol snap. Elkins, hands off. Oh, Harris. Harris with the big stop. Lots of room to run now. Zakiti, he got the angle, stays on his feet. Pass, Rhodes, got Houston. It. Got it. Got it for the score. Right set on the right side. And off. Chadwick stops at the line. Touchdown! Unbelievable! Alongside the coach, Jim Cole, here's the voice of the Bengals, Ran Northam. Well, no Coach Cole with us again tonight to wrap up our season, but uh, we will have Evan Rogers with us along here in just a little bit as Luke Anderson, our producer, is here with us. Nate Perez is ready to run the camera as well. We're going to have a little different pregame for you tonight. Uh, we are just about 27 minutes away from kickoff here of the season finale, Fuqua Arena and Middle Creek, the rivalry to end all rivalries. Uh, but we're going to bring you the senior presentation here in just a moment that will be delivered by our PA announcer, the uh, home voice of the Bengals. And uh, before we do that, we're going to toss it over to Luke to get a couple of our commercials brought to you here from our our uh, sponsors who have been with us all season long, and we certain, certainly appreciate all of them. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to pass it over to the uh, public address announcer here at Bengal Stadium for the presentation of Senior Night here at uh, Fuqua Arena High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bengal Stadium on the campus of Fuqua Arena High School. And welcome to Senior Night 2019. For the first half, we're going to recognize members of the football team, cheerleading squad, and athletic training staff followed by recognizing members of the band at halftime. And now, for our senior class for 2019, athletic trainer, Lizzie Aikens. Lizzie is escorted by her parents, Christy and Bill Aikens. Lizzie is a four-year player for the Bengals softball team and is a member of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine. After graduation, Lizzie plans on attending East Carolina University to pursue a career in nursing. Lizzie Aikens, everybody. Left guard, number 68, Matthew Bell. Matthew was escorted by his mother, Catherine Bell. Besides working hard in school, Matthew has been active in Boy Scouts for six years and recently earned their highest award, his Eagle Scout. 
He participates in community service events and is active in the community, the church community as well. Matthew hopes to attend Western Carolina and obtain his bachelor's degree in biology. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Bell. Cheerleader, Isabella Bryant. Isabella is escorted by her parents, Dana and Greg Bryant, sister Luciana and brother Colvin. Isabella has been a Bengal varsity cheerleader for four years and is currently taking a nurse's aid class at Wake Tech. After graduation, she plans to attend East Carolina University's nursing program and hopes to be a cheerleader for the Pirates. Ladies and gentlemen, Isabella Bryant. Nose guard, number 66, Tyler Burgess. Tyler is the son of April and Marcella Burgess and is escorted this evening by Coach Paul. Following graduation, Tyler plans on pursuing his career in the Army. Army strong. Thank you, Tyler, for your service. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Burgess. Defensive tackle, number 60, Melvin Cullen Jr. Melvin is escorted by his parents, Kenya and Melvin Cologne. Following graduation, Melvin plans to attend Wake Tech and transfer into a four-year college to further his education. Ladies and gentlemen, Melvin Cologne Jr. Cornerback, number seven, Gabe Davidson. Gabe is escorted by his mother, Sarah Taylor, and stepdad, Kevin Taylor. Gabe has played four years of Bengal football and was part of the undefeated junior varsity team of 2017. He is a member of the National Honor Society and Spanish Honor Society. Gabe aspires to attend NC State and major in business and sports marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, Gabe Davidson. Athletic trainer, Mary Green. Mary is escorted by her parents, Tracy and Chris Green. Mary has been an athletic trainer for the past two years and is a member of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine. She has played on the soccer team for three years. Mary hopes to attend East Carolina University to pursue a career in athletic training or sports psychology. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Green. Athletic trainer, Riley Haas. Riley is escorted by her parents, Sheila and David Haas. Riley plays on the varsity basketball team, is a member of the National Honor Society, and the president of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine. She plans on attending the university to obtain a Bachelor of Science degree and a Doctorate of Physical Therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, Riley Haas. Athletic trainer, Cameron Pear. Cameron is escorted by her parents, Scott and Brent Pear. Cameron is a member of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine. She has been a football trainer for two years and on the varsity swing team for three years. Cameron plans on attending a four-year university like East Carolina University to major in sports medicine and recreational therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Pear. Athletic trainer, Sarah Hickey. Sarah is escorted by her parents, Christine and Edwin Hickey, her grandmother, Eudora Hickey, and her sister, Mia. Sarah is a member of the National Honor Society, secretary of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine, and plays on the varsity lacrosse team. Sarah plans to attend Hobart Williams Smith College and major in kinesiology and pre-athletic training to become an athletic trainer. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Hickey. Center, number 75, Colby Humphrey. Colby is escorted by his parents, Lisa and Tom Humphrey, and brothers Aiden and Dylan. Colby has played two years of Bengal football, and he would like to attend a college to play football or become a welder or electrician. Ladies and gentlemen, Colby Humphreys. Cheerleader, Alyssa Hunter. Alyssa is escorted by her mother, Natalie McKinney. 
After graduation, she plans to attend Winston-Salem State's nursing program to become a pediatric nurse and work at Duke Hospital. Alyssa hopes to continue to cheer in college. Ladies and gentlemen, Alyssa Hunter. Athletic trainer, Kyla Jones. Kyla is escorted by her parents, Denise and Kevin Jones, sister Cassidy, and brother Cordell. Kyla was in the youth leadership program as a junior, and she is a member of the National Honor Society of Sports Medicine, and following graduation, plans on pursuing a career in nursing at Johnston Community College. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyla Jones. We play today. Safety, number four, Jack Jones. Jack is escorted by his parents, Tracy and John Jones. Jack has played football is for the Bengals the first, for like four years like and was also like a member of the undefeated football. junior varsity team in 2017. He is a member of the National Honor Society and plans to attend UNC Chapel Hill yeah, and major in chemistry. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Jack yeah, Jones. Last year. <laughs> Running back, Hunter, number 11, Matthew Lyons. Matthew was escorted by his parents, Wendy and Mike Lyons. Matthew has played four years of Bengal football and was a captain of the undefeated junior varsity hey, you know, team of 2017. He is a captain of the varsity lacrosse team, being named all-conference honorable mention and East Region all-star team last year. He is a member of the National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, Road Capital, and German Honor Society. And Student Council Senior Class Secretary. Matthew plans on attending a four-year university to pursue a degree in business. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Lyons. Cheerleader. Gallon Maldonado. Gallon is escorted by her mother, Gallon. She has been varsity Bengal cheerleader for four years. Gallon plans on attending either East Carolina University Nursing Program or Johnson and Wales University to major in their culinary program. Ladies and gentlemen, Jalen Maldonado. Defensive end, number 48, Ethan Mitchell. Ethan is escorted by his parents, Heather and Todd Mitchell, and his brother, Matthew. He is another member of the undefeated junior varsity season in 2017. After graduation, Ethan plans to attend a four-year university and pursue a degree in business. Ladies and gentlemen, Ethan Mitchell. Offensive lineman, number 76, Gavin Pierce. Gavin is escorted by his mother, Catherine, a few great Brina High School alumni of 1995. Gavin has played four years of Bengal football and three years of varsity wrestling, where he was a regional qualifier in wrestling. Gavin would like to attend a four-year college with intent to play football. He aspires to pursue a career as an athletic physical therapist. Ladies and gentlemen, Gavin Pierce. Defensive end, number 44, Kent Pottinger. Kent is escorted by his parents, Tammy and Kevin Pointer. This is Kent's second year at Pequay Arena High School and on the varsity football team. Kent is also a member of the varsity lacrosse team and plans to attend a four-year university to pursue a career as a physical therapist. Ladies and gentlemen, Kent Pointer. Cheerleader, Sydney Quinn. Sydney is escorted by her parents, Blythe and Rich and her brother, Max. Sydney was one of the inaugural women's lacrosse players and has played varsity lacrosse for two years. She has been a Bengal cheerleader for three years and is a member of the Sports Medicine Honor Society. Sydney is committed to play lacrosse at Barton College, where she will pursue her degree in exercise science and then continue on to obtain a master's in athletic training. Ladies and gentlemen, Sydney Quinn. Cheerleader, Alicia Ross. Alicia is escorted by her parents, Lisa Ooh, and Clint Ross. Kind of she has been a varsity Bengal cheerleader for four years and plans on attending a four-year university 
East Carolina, East Carolina, East Carolina, East Carolina or Winston-Salem State to get in state to state pursue a degree in elementary education and teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, Alicia Ross. Cheerleader, Amelia Schneider. Amelia is escorted by her parents, Tracy and Brian Schneider. She has been varsity Bengal cheerleader for four years and is a member of the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, along with the math, English, and social studies honor societies. Amelia is also a member of the Key Club and one of the student ambassadors. No. Amelia plans to attend North Carolina, 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 Carolina State Carolina University today. and major in communications and creative writing. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, Amelia Schneider. Oh, baseball, oh, they're a Cheerleader, Moya Shaw. Moya is escorted by her parents, Faith and Alan Shaw, Good. and brother Paul. Moya has been a varsity Bengal cheerleader for four years. She is a member of the National Honor Society. Spanish Honor Society, that, that. Student that's Council, that's and that's Senior that's Class that's President. She is also a member of the Key Club, National English Honor normal. Society, down to four and is President again. of Social yeah. Studies yeah. Honor Society, and a representative for Sigma Chi yeah. Honor that's Society. Moya plans to attend the four-year university yeah. majoring in yeah. biology yeah. and aspires to pursue yeah. a career yeah. in pediatric yeah. dentistry. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Moya Shaw, Cheerleader, Savannah Soha. Savannah is escorted by her parents, Dana and Johan Soha, and brothers David and Taylor. She has been a varsity Bengal cheerleader for four years and was a cheerleader of the year in her sophomore year. Savannah is a member of the National Honor Society, Art and English Honor Society, and Sigma Chi. She hopes to attend UNC Chapel Hill or NC State to cheer and to major in three health professions to become a pediatrician. Ladies and gentlemen, Savannah Sopa. It's just weird that they do it. Offensive lineman number 15, Justin Thompson. Justin is escorted by his parents, Matt Thompson and Terry Morris. He was a member of the undefeated junior varsity team in 2017. Justin has been on the honor roll consistently that doesn't all four from years South of high school like that's and plans on attending that. college in computer science I think if they had to one pursue out, a career as a programmer. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Thompson. Cheerleader, Tori Thornton. Tori is escorted by her parents, Gwen and Ivan Thornton, sister Ashley, and brother Trey. She has been a varsity Bengal cheerleader for one year. Yeah, they Tori plans on attending Winston-Salem State University to pursue a career as a nurse. Ladies and gentlemen, Tori Thornton. Running back, number 33, Siddiqui Uzangu. Siddiqui is escorted by his mom and stepdad, Jackie and Holly Kamala. Siddiqui has played four years of football that was part of the undefeated 2017 Junior Varsity team. Following graduation, Siddiqui plans to attend a four-year college. Ladies and gentlemen, Siddiqui Yusandu. Safety, wide receiver, number 18, Jack Wahlberg. Jack is escorted by his parents, and Lewis Wahlberg. Jack was also a part of the undefeated Junior Varsity team two years ago. After yeah, graduation, I mean, so Jack plans to pursue so a career that's in the insane. Air Force. Gene yeah. Hine, I mean, so the sky's the limit. That, Thank you, Jack. That's that's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Wahlberg. But they're not Garner. They're not, they're not the same Offensive lineman, number 52, Josh Wall. I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. Josh they're is escorted so by his parents, Gwen yeah. and Michael like Wall. Team next year. Josh oh. has played Bengal football for you four years. And was a starter on the undefeated junior varsity team. Because they're like, he is a member of the National Honor Society, German Honor Society, like we could technical and math honor society. Josh volunteers with this church and horses for hope, and has completed all requirements for Eagle Scout. Following graduation, Josh aspires to major in biomedical engineering at UNC Chapel Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Walls. All right, folks, those are your seniors for a special 
senior night and a special broadcast here in the Bengal pregame show, uh, Bengal game day, presented by the Aviator Smokehouse. We are going to quickly go through these opening thoughts. I want to break down for you what this game means and what the SWAC standings are right now. Uh, Rand Northam, Evan Rogers has joined us, Luke Anderson is here, of course, and uh, Nate Perez is up on the roof giving you all the great footage of tonight's festivity. So Holly Springs, 9-1, and 5-1. and one. They have locked up not only a share of the SWAC, but the tiebreaker, um, so they will get the top seed coming out of the SWAC. Apex Friendship and Garner Magnet playing tonight, 7-3, and 5-5 five and five respectively, 4-1 and one each in the conference. So whoever wins that game gets second place and gets the automatic bid into the postseason. Then beyond that, if Apex Friendship is the one to lose, they have a better chance actually of getting in in the uh, at-large bid. Garner Magnet has a little bit more work to do. They're sitting at 49 right now, so if they lose, they're going to drop down in the average or in the uh, adjusted max prep rankings, which means it's going to be even harder. I think 48 right now is about the cutoff, so some weird things would have to happen for them. Apex Friendship right now at 38, so they wouldn't drop too far by that loss to Garner Magnet and have a better chance at a uh, an at-large bid. But tonight, our game tonight, if Fuquay Verena wins this game tonight against Middle Creek, that means the Mustangs are out because Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek would be at 3-3 three and three in conference play. And as of last year, that new rule that they implemented, you cannot jump a conference opponent to make it into the, po the postseason regardless of what your adjusted max prep ranking is. So if Fuquay Verena wins tonight, they have the tiebreaker over Middle Creek, and Fuquay would have to get into the postseason before Middle Creek has a chance to get in. And if Fuquay is getting into the postseason, that means they're the absolute last team that make it into that pool, and nobody else is getting in after them. So that means Middle Creek with a loss tonight is out, even though they sit at 30 right now in the adjusted max rankings. We'll continue to talk about that. We'll bring your Mustang scouting report and much more coming up on the other side of this timeout. A shortened uh, Bengal game day to get you ready for this contest tonight. Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. I don't know what else to do. I've tried everything. We've got to get to dinner at the Aviator Smokehouse soon. Wow, how did you do that? Quick, make it stop again. Dinner's at the Aviator Smokehouse in 30 minutes. No way. Aviator Smokehouse. Aviator Smokehouse? Well, I guess the tiny tyrant has spoken. We'd better get to the Aviator Smokehouse. You know window effects for the smooth factory finish they do on your vehicle tinting. But did you know that same high quality work can also benefit your home or business? Window tinting for your home or office will reduce heat, cut down on glare, and stop floors and furniture from fading, saving you money and protecting your assets. Don't know whether you need window tinting? Contact Window Effects today for a free estimate. Search for Window Effects on Facebook and tell them R3 Sports sent you. Creative Wiring Solutions has been a leader in home theater installation since 2002. They specialize in home integration, structured wiring of smart homes, house audio, noise control, security, monitoring, central vacuum systems, and so much more. From the Triangle to the Coast, Creative Wiring Solutions proudly serves throughout all of North Carolina. They recognize the special care and attention to detail needed when designing your home entertainment. Expect the best. The Strong Center for Excellence is a nonprofit organization that provides team, group, and individual skills training and league play for basketball and football. They serve youth from ages 6 to 18 whose playing ability ranges from beginner to those preparing for college recruitment. Their trainers are former professional and college athletes who share the belief that hard work, discipline, and a positive attitude are essential in helping people accomplish their goals. Take your student athlete to the next level, 919-285-1374 or thestrongcenter.org. Welcome back to Bengal Game Day, presented by the Aviator Smokehouse. It's time to head across the gridiron and see how the Bengals match up in tonight's opposing scouting report. Rand Northam alongside the head coach of the Bengals, Jeb Hall. Coach, um, this game has become an opportunity for you. You get to leave everything else behind. You get to wipe off the record. You get to, um, you get to focus on one task tonight. There's no hope at postseason. Um, which looks like a negative, but for your biggest rival, you got a chance to do something big tonight. I imagine that's something that's on your mind tonight. Yeah, you know, we talked to the kids and said, you know, there's not many times in 
in football where you get to win the last game unless you're a state champion. And tonight, hopefully we can do that and come out with a win and be the last game against our biggest rival. And, you know, hopefully that something that can uh, propel us into the off season. And so, you know, we do have a lot of young kids. And uh, so we gotta, we got to have a boost going into the off season. I imagine you took away some positives last week, not the outcome you wanted, but still a good first start to the game and, and hanging in there right down to the end. Yeah, you know, I, we, we started off with a fumble, and then I was thinking, oh, you know, here we go again. And the kids, they, they we didn't put the ball on the ground again. I don't, I'm pretty sure we didn't. And uh, But, uh, you know, we the kids fought hard the whole time. And, uh, you know, today our biggest thing is uh, finish. Like we find, we've been talking all year about putting four quarters together. We got three last week. Now let's just finish it. It's been probably the hottest football season as far as just not being able to practice during the week and so on and so forth. Uh, you're going to finish on the coldest game of the year, starting in the, the upper 30s. Does the weather bother you at all? Does it concern you at all tonight, or are you glad to be in football weather now? Yeah, the kids that are playing, we have a lot playing both ways. And, you know, things like that, they shouldn't get too cold. But, you know, and talking about the heat cold and all that, I tell them, you know, it's, it's not, you're not Goldilocks. It can't, it's not always going to be just right. So we got to overcome and adapt, and whether it's heat or cold or whatever it is, we just got to play through it. That's, uh, you know, one of the greatest things about football is a game of elements, and you got to play through it. And luckily the other side's playing through this, just the same thing as well. So uh, tonight, Middle Creek, uh, historically a passing team. They're going to bring more of that tonight uh, uh, still at you. So what do you need to stop tonight, and how do you stop that passing game on the Middle Creek side? Well, you know, our kids just have to know the coverages and uh, stick with it and read their keys. But I, I have a feeling that they're going to come out and try to establish a run, you know, because we've struggled with that. Uh, so that's really the key to stopping the pass and being able to stop the run first. All right, Coach. Best of luck tonight. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Those were your coaches' comments presented by the Strong Center for Excellence. We will quickly mention just a couple things for your Bengal scouting report and then get you to kick off here tonight. The letdown didn't happen until late versus Garner. That's got to continue here tonight. The Bengals have to come out strong, and it's about believing in yourself all night long. That's what we've been talking about the last two weeks. It's about believing in yourself. I get to snuggle with you. Beat Middle Creek. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. This is your Super Bowl. This is your season. And we will get to that Super Bowl here in just a moment. We've got uh, senior night here tonight, so a shortened pregame for you. Kickoff on the other side of this timeout on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Now here we've got a spacious kitchen. Honey, this house is beautiful. I think it's the one. The it just came on the market. Made. I'm glad Krista and was able to get us in here quickly. Forward. Krista was right. With how quickly houses are selling, it's important to know the market and be prepared to act fast. With the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty, we'll help you find your dream home. With Krista Absher, the important thing to remember is you come first. She works with honor and integrity, educating you every step of the home buying process. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Protecting your family, your home, your car is extremely important. One company that's been doing just that in Fuquay Varina since 1956 is Dickens Insurance Agency. Their agents are tried and tested and are able to handle any questions you may have regarding your insurance needs. And if you combine your personal auto, homeowners, and life insurance, let the savings start rolling in. Visit Dickens Insurance Agency at 402 Wake Chapel Road or online at dickensinsurance.com. Big box stores can sell you a new TV or even speaker wire. What they can't give you is custom entertainment. Creative Wiring Solutions is the area leader in home theater installation. In addition to offering custom design and personalized service, they offer a wide variety of products and services, including speakers, projector screens, and so much more. They'll customize packages and accessories for your individual needs, from small projects like TV mounting to larger projects like full home theater installation. Expect the best with Creative Wiring Solutions. This is Fuquay Marina High School Football on the Bingo R3 Sports Network. Presented by Krista Absure and the Absure Realty Group. Stop by their new location to the corner of Main Street and Raleigh Street. And always online at theabsurerealtygroup.com. By the Aviator Smokehouse at the corner of Broad and Stewart. And online at aviatorbrew.com slash smokehouse. 
by Dickens Insurance Agency, proudly serving the Fuquay Verena community since 1956. By Winging It Tap House and Grill, located in the Five Point Center, next to Sheets on the east side of Fuquay Verena. By Window Effects, give your ride that touch that will make heads turn. By P. Castles Law, this year's sponsor of the Players of the Game. By the Strong Center for Excellence, empowering youth on and off the court and field. And by Creative Wiring Solutions, the area's leader in custom home entertainment. Now, with a call of the game alongside the coach, Jim Cole, here's the voice of the Bengals, Rand Northam. 12 minutes up on the first quarter clock. Fuquay, Verena, and Middle Creek in the Bengals Super Bowl. And in fact, the coach, Jim Cole, could not miss Creek Week. I walked up just in time. You sure did. Did I miss anything good? Nothing yet. We, uh, we had I'm a, a little nice concerned we're trying to give warm welcomings to uh, football teams directed by people. That seemed a little odd to me, but I missed that. you didn't hear the PA I as, I, as I walk up. I we're giving not. a warm welcome to the Mustangs directed by head coach. I just just kind of rubbed me wrong. Well, they got a director, we've got a coach, and we're ready to. Uh, hey, I'm going to give a little pro tip to anybody that's listening to us that's in line for tickets. The line for tickets is extremely long. Uh, extremely long. There's a gate open right behind the press box. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. There ain't nobody back there, guys. Well, Fuqua Verena is set to receive the opening kick. This is for all the marbles here. No postseason for Fuqua Verena uh, after this one tonight. But a win for Middle Creek at least makes it a possibility for the Mustangs. As we've got... Look at the seniors on the fence. That is sharp. It is, isn't it, Adele? That is uh, Georgina Consolo's... Uh, sports marketing group that put that together. Kickoff is underway back to the nine yard line. Return back to the near side. It's Ethan Burke who's trying to use the wide side of the field. A late push out of bounds, but cleanly. And that will set up first down and 10 from the 19 for the Bengals. Pertinent question Are those athletes being reimbursed for the use of their likenesses? I do not believe that they are. It's a shame. Yes, I think that was only a uh, NCAA decision. Rand Northam alongside the coach, Jim Cole, as well as Evan Rogers. He's doing your stats tonight, and he will be providing some analysis as he has been for the last few weeks. Luke Anderson is here producing, as always, and Nate Perez, well, we're going to peel him off of the roof uh, after he freezes to whatever is up there here a little bit later on tonight. Sakiti Uzandu gets the opening carry, carries off to the left-hand side for no gain. Looked like he uh, bumbled the ball just a little bit, just as he did for that opening play last week as well, but it went well after that for Fuqua Verena. Tackle made by Luke McDonald and others as that sets up second down and 10. You can put your hood up now, but I've already noticed the lack of product. I, I'm, I'm after basketball practice. I don't, I don't put it in after basketball. Second down and 10 with twins receivers to the right-hand side and a tight set on the left. This will be a handoff that goes to the right-hand side, and Uzandu is snuffed out for no gain yet again at the 20-yard line. To continue the Bengals scouting report, we're going to play a little bit of catch up. We uh, devoted our pregame show to the uh, seniors here tonight. The Bengals have to understand that one play does not a game make. Uh, that has been key in the last couple weeks, especially last week we talked about. If those big game, uh, those big plays are made up, you do not have to make up all those yards and then some back. The Bengals have to play 1-0 every play and be 1-0 this week. Tight trip set to the right-hand side. This will be a toss sweep to Matthew Lyons. Lyons takes it to the right-hand side, gets a good gain, about eight yards. It's not going to be enough to move the chains, though. The Bengals would have a decision to make, but I think that decision must be punt at this time, Coach. I would like to think so, but I don't see anybody coming off the sidelines. Well, luckily, you've got your punter in the backfield as uh, Matt Lyons is there. But uh, fourth down and two. Let's see what they say. Braswell runs from the sideline. Don't have uh, the play clock again here tonight, so we'll keep an eye on the back judge as he checks his watch. Still no call here. That 40-second clock certainly helping here. Bengals are going to go for it. And, oh, it looked like Middle Creek jumped first, but I think they're going to call that against Fuquay Verena as the left end. How it? I, I don't really understand how the left end is moving. Uh, on Fuquay Verena's side, unless he moved after Middle Creek moved, 
And the timeout actually will be called by the Bengals. So um, no penalty will be called. The flag will be waved off. And uh, I thought that was going to get real ugly real quick there, oh, Evan. Oh, <laughs> man. I mean, you would think after running that play probably twice a game almost that you would tell the line, just, you know, sit down, see if they jump. Yeah, and it looked like Middle Creek was certainly going to jump. I, again, I'm not sure what the left end was doing there, but, uh, again, nothing hurt, uh, thankfully, for Fuquay Verena. So let's uh, say a little thanks to our pregame sponsor as uh, we, again, had a, a shortened version of that here today. The dream started in the backyard smoking meat. Then the homegrown recipes were brought to downtown Fuquay Verena to share with all. The Aviator Smokehouse has something for everyone, from smoked wings deep fried to order, to homemade onion rings to smoked pork and ribs. All their food is made in-house with pork from North Carolina and farm to table whenever possible. Whether you're going solo, a date night, or a party of 100, make your choice the Aviator Smokehouse at the corner of Broad and Stewart. Check them out online at aviatorbrew.com slash smokehouse. And why don't you tell us about the Booster Club while you're at it? Well, have you gotten your all-sports season pass yet? The Fuquay Verena Athletic Booster Club's goal is to provide support and information to students, faculty, parents, and the community about Bengal athletics. There you go. Let's hold it right there as Sakiti Uzandu gets the carry. Does he have enough? It looks like he's got the first down, and he does. Bengals move the chain on their first fourth down attempt of the night. Let's finish off that thought there when you get a chance. Luke, thank you very much. Uh, da -da -da -da. Get your membership today. Visit FVHSBoosterClub.com. Thank you very much. We almost got you all the way through it. All right, first down and 10 for the Bengals as they move it ahead on fourth down. A very big first down there for the Bengals up to the 31-yard line. Braswell under center again, man in motion, little bubble screen to the left-hand side to Jackson Barker, and uh, you could see Ethan Burke kind of pulling up there. It looked like he had a chance to make a block, but he was behind the defender. Didn't want to get uh, called for a penalty there, so it will be, looks like no gain really on the left-hand side. Maybe, uh, they're going to say it's enough for, at least enough to call it a yard for us. So second down and nine, it's going to be a long nine coming in here. Tight set on the right-hand side, one split out to the left-hand side, one in the backfield, that's Matthew Lyons. He's going to get the toss sweep to the right-hand side again. That's the wide side of the field. He's got some room to run. Gets the first down again as he carries it up to the 43-yard line, and that toss sweep working well. Again, when they've got the wide side of the field, it works even better for the Bengals, as you could imagine, and that time the blockers really set up well too. And, yeah, early on, um, it looks like Middle Creek definitely isn't the fastest team outside wide. Usually we see the Bengals sometimes struggle going out wide against really quick athletic teams, but it uh, doesn't seem to be the case tonight. First down and 10. Didn't get a real good chance to mention it as well, but the Strong Center for Excellence always providing our coaches' comments. We appreciate that sponsorship again tonight. Fake toss sweep and a pass over the middle will be overthrown. Burt couldn't turn back in time. Um, that was very reminiscent. That's the Garner it's Magnet Garner playbook look. right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. it looks like we uh, took something from Garner that past yeah. week. And it worked really well. I mean, had that pass been on by uh, That's Braswell. That's stride. That's a big play. Yeah, yeah exactly. Man, I mean, um, he just threw behind him, unfortunately. But uh, good look and a good attempt by the Bengals. Second down and 10, ball sitting at the 43-yard line on the right hash, taking some time to get the play call in. But, again, that 40-second play clock this year, very different and certainly gives you more time to work with. Arm is up with 10 seconds left. Man in motion from the right. This will be a handoff who uh, that one's given to Lions. That was the man in motion. He carries up to the 40-yard line. Another first down and another big game. Gain the end around working well for Matthew Lyons. Good to see him coming back alive. 124 carries on the season before tonight, 821 yards. Um, unlikely, but boy, I would love to see a 179 plus yard night for him so he can uh, eclipse the century mark or, or the, uh, the millennia mark, if you will, uh, to get that uh, thousand yards on the season. Not gonna say that's uh, real likely, but hey, let's go for it. Tr uh, trips receivers actually two and a wing. The wing gets it. Lions with the carry again on the counter. Different look to the counter. It was that was uh, almost a delayed counter, if you will. I know the counter's already delayed, but um, a, a delayed look to that one, and I like mixing it up a little bit here tonight. The fluidity two season or two weeks ago is what we were talking about. No fluidity yeah. for that South Garner game. A little bit better last week. 
looks to be even better this week. I think things are firing quite well for the Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals seem to be firing on all cylinders, and they're mixing up the playbook, which I really like. They're, they're doing some outside runs. They're doing some pitches, some fake pitch we saw earlier, and uh, we'll see what else they have in the book tonight. Second down and six coming up on the four-yard gain. Pass to the right-hand oh. side through the hands of the defender. And... Um, Talk about being a cold night. That probably didn't feel real great off of those fingers. I believe that was Braden Harrison breaking that one up or uh, where it went through. Braswell a little bit behind his receiver so far here tonight. Yeah, but I like the play call. Second and six, you know, air it out a little, just kind of get a better pass. And I look for, you know, your three-yard, four-yard play here because this is obviously four-down territory for the Bengals. Absolutely, yeah. Boy, if it is on your 29 or whatever it was, <laughs> it certainly is in uh, Mustang territory. So this will be a handoff. Looked like Braswell was thinking about maybe keeping it, but Zakiti Uzandu with that speed went right through, and the uh, tackle made, first contact made by Quincy Pugh. And a couple others in there to help him out. Zakiti Uzandu with no gain again tonight. He's having some trouble here tonight. Now he's coming off uh, limping just a little bit, but... Um, his number has been called three, maybe four times here tonight, and uh, unfortunately that one just not going in for anything again. Fourth down is coming, and it uh, looked like wholesale changes for Middle Creek. Not sure if they thought that there was uh, a timeout called. But uh, regardless, fourth down, and the Bengals obviously going to go for it again. They are one for one on the night here so far. Trip, or twins receivers to the right-hand side. One split out to the left. Braswell with the high shotgun snap. Rolls to his right. Has some pressure. Makes the throw complete. Right at the stick. Gets the first down. Bengals moving the chains again. And again on fourth down. Excellent series right here for the Bengals. This is the Bengal of uh, Old Town, if you will, as Fuquay Varina used to have those just long, sustained drives. It's different on this one as there have definitely been some passes involved, but uh, that variation of play calling, as Evan's been talking about, that has certainly helped here on this drive to keep it alive. Ethan Burke splits out to the left-hand side. A pair of wing backs, one goes in motion. That will be a handoff to Lyons. Lyons has some room to run, cuts it up on the left-hand side, continues down inside the 10-yard line, down to the nine. Bengals with first down and goal. Excellent run again, that end around working well here. Matthew Lyons getting the uh, call again, he's had an excellent night so far. We'll catch you up on numbers. You can follow along with live stats at r3sports.org slash Bengals. This will be a handoff to Connor Sheparel. He spun around. Did the ball come out? No, the little pushing and shoving at the end. Are they going to signal for it? No, they're going to say he was out or not yet into the end zone. That is unreal. Connor Chaparral holding on to the ball as he got spun 360 horizontally. And now the Bengals have one yard to go here to punch it in. Ball control certainly crucial here for Fuquay Verena. And let's see if they give it back to him again. Man in motion from the right wing. Connor Chaparral, touchdown Bengals on the board first. 6-0 with 4.52 left to play in the first quarter. Can't start off much better than that. I mean, going for it, fourth and two at your own 29, to me that just sent a message. I mean, the Bengals are here to play tonight. They're not going to back down. They know they're the underdog, and underdogs, you got to take risks to win. Certainly do. Excellent start, and boy, it is the exact same start, believe it or not, as one season ago as the Bengals went up 6-0. Offsides now on the kick attempt from Middle Creek. That will, um, usually that one is declined, believe it or not. They'll move it half the uh, distance to the goal and uh, try the kick here from one and a half yards out. Actually, it looks like they just remained at the three. So, again, they usually decline that one. High snap, but a good hold. Kick is up, and it's no good again. No joke. This is exactly how it started last season against Middle Creek. Middle Creek went down, scored the very next series, so we'll see how that goes, and then missed their PAT as well. 
Regardless, though, a nice drive, excellent drive for Fuqua Verena. We'll get the play count for you here in just a moment. But, Coach, uh, that's how Fuqua Verena wanted and needed to start that out. It took two fourth downs to get that drive down there. Connor Chaparral got into the end zone twice. The second one counted a 6 nothing lead on these Middle Creek Mustangs. You're seven minutes off the clock in the first quarter. You imposed your will. Uh, you showed your offense. You had some confidence in them. You kept your defense off the field. Uh, other than the missed PAT, I'm not sure that you could have done any more on that drive. 15 plays, 80 yards for Fuqua Verena, and a touchdown as uh, Bryson Braswell handed it off to Connor Sheparel for the one-yard touchdown PAT. No good with 4.52 left to play in the opening quarter. Great start and team effort there. I mean, how many different names did we call on that one for Fuqua Verena as the kick is a low line drive, goes through the arms of one, picked up by the second. He is down on his knees, so that is where the play will end at the 30-yard line. Middle Creek Mustangs will have the ball on offense for the first time here tonight. Senior quarterback Sean Brown, he's 137, 27, uh, excuse me, 137 of 274 with 10 interceptions on the season, 226 yards per game through the air, and the top receivers that we'll be talking about tonight, they average between 11 and 14 yards per catch. So we'll see how much of a factor that plays tonight. 10 interceptions, though, again, not a big running game, but that is where they will go first. It will be a run, and it will be a run for about nine yards as Cole Prenovo uh, gets the uh, play call on the first carry. Looks like Middle Creek is going to quickly try to go to the line and try to keep this moving quickly here on second down with one to go. Trips receivers to the right-hand side. One split out to the left. And now they're going to look to the sideline to play to change the play call up again. Shotgun snap. Pass to the left-hand side. Complete. Nice move to make some uh, room in open space again. Forward progress is stopped, although not tackled, as the receiver... Number 17, Darius Boone, pulls that one down. He averages 29 yards per game. Not one of the top receivers on the team, uh, as we'll be looking for Jemmery Ellis and Therius Suggs, a senior and junior, respectively. i got to say, I'm enjoying your, uh, your pronunciation of these names. You're doing a fine job. I can't say that they're all correct, but uh, I'm doing my best here. First down and 10, just shy of midfield. As the shotgun snap comes in, that'll be a handoff. And it will be taken to the left-hand side. A couple missed tackles there as Prenovo gets the uh, call again. It's a plethora of, sim of syllables. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, again, Prenovo with only 41 yards per game. He's gotten two big play calls already and sets up another first down as he gets that uh, double-digit gain on that one. Trips receivers split out to the right again, one out to the left as Brown looks to the uh, Mustang sideline for the play call. Calls it in, and now gets the shotgun snap. Looks to his right, looks to the middle. Long pass down the left-hand side. Got Defenders it. there. Well done. Look to me could have been a pick, but well defended anyway, at least batted away. I believe that was Shea Pittman who put his arm in there. He's had a busy... Um, Busy couple of last uh, couple of plays the last couple of weeks. He seems to always be beat, beaten by the uh, receiver, but he makes plays like that where he catches up and he makes the play. Well, that he, he was needs on the to. inside hip there. He was. I mean, he could not have been in a better position. Would have liked to see him make the catch and then a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Big tackle again, not pulled down, but did just what he need to needed to. Did Joe Carlin? He stopped the forward progress and let his fellow Bengals come in and help out. Third down now after a short loss, they're going to say, maybe just a couple inches there backing it up. So not quite third down 11. Third down and 10 coming up here. And a big third down if the Bengals can get a stop and go back on offense. Man in motion from the left-hand side. Shotgun snap. Brown looks to the right-hand side. Goes to his receiver complete. Plenty of Bengals there for defense, but they will get the first down as they bring it close to the 25-yard line and not quite able to make that stop as Caden Linkus was in there, a couple other Bengals as well. The completion made to... Uh, was that Therius Suggs? 
little zone look there in the secondary. Middle Creek did a good job finding the soft spot and just sitting in it. Brown gets a low snap, now looks to his left-hand side, fires it into his receiver, gets that complete on the left-hand side. And that one is complete to Owen Harrison for an eight-yard gain. Second down and two coming up now. Fake handoff to Prinavo, and the pass is over to the right-hand side as Kyle Isle carries ahead for close to a first down. Looks like that might be enough. They're going to say it's third down, though. Third down and almost a full yard here. So another big third down coming. Middle Creek has been able to uh, get these completions well done with longer yardage. And again, 11 to 14 yards per catch for their top receivers. And that's certainly what they're looking like so far tonight. Confusion coming in with the play calls from the sideline so far, but plenty of time on the play clock. Brown gets the snap. Prenovo stopped at the line initially, but then continues to just roll off defenders. He uh, continues forward, gets the first down at the 11 yard line. You mentioned the play clock. I do not see them operable tonight. Yeah, they're not operable. They've had some issues with it the last couple weeks and haven't gotten them to sync up uh, the way they needed to, so they are off tonight, and we have to just uh, rely on the back judge. Trips receivers to the left, one to the right, looking for the play call on the sideline again. Prenovo will change to the right side hip of Brown. Still looking to the sideline, taking some time to get these play calls in. Count is going on. So he was at 10, count off at five, and gets the snap off. Pass with pressure, not sure what took so long for uh, the defender, Darius Briley, to get in there. It looked like he just kind of stopped and waited until he jumped up when the pass was thrown. It looked like he could have put a, a little more pressure maybe on the uh, quarterback, Brown. You don't want to get too deep and then give up a running lane to the quarterback, so, so well played. Nice arm on that quarterback. That was a well-thrown ball through the hands of his receiver. But that brings up second down and 10. The ball sitting at the 11 yard line. Twins receivers to either side. Main in motion from the left. This will be a handoff. Prenovo gets it again. Beaten uh, in the backfield was the defender. I believe that's Caden Linkus. And he make it, makes it up onto that second level. Gets a gain of about seven. So bringing up third down and three now. Edlin credited for the tackle, along with a couple other Bengals. And here we are again at third down. Middle Creek doing well on third down so far tonight and Brinkman getting completing a lot of them with the pass so far. And a timeout will be called by Middle Creek. Now, one thing we saw last week uh, in that Garner game, excuse me, not a timeout, it's the end of the first quarter. So we will have that third down and the second quarter coming for you on the other side of this timeout. Bengals lead the way right now, 6-0 on top of the Middle Creek Mustangs. You're watching Fuquay Verena High School Football on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. If you're looking for a realtor and want to save thousands, call me. I'm Krista Absher of the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty. With our Heroes to Homeowners program, first responders, nurses, teachers, and veterans qualify for a 25% commission rebate to thank you for your service and sacrifice. As an Air Force veteran with 13 years of local real estate experience, our mission is to help fellow veterans and local heroes achieve their dream of homeownership. Call me, Krista Absher, 919-355-SOLD. That's 919-355-SOLD. Or visit theabsherrealtygroup.com. When I met Arnie and Monty Bullock of Dickens Insurance Agency, I could tell they bleed orange. They're connected to the Fuquay Verena community and are committed to helping the community protect its assets. Whether it's your family, your personal property, or your business, Dickens Insurance Agency is there for you. Contact Fuquay Verena alumni Arnie or Monty or any of the agents at Dickens Insurance Agency at 919-552-5603. Visit them online at dickensinsurance.com or stop by and visit them in the heart of Fuquay Verena at 402. To Wake Chapel Road. Twelve quarter, uh, twelve minutes. Excuse me. Up on the second quarter clock, and it's a big third down for Middle Creek. Big third down for the Fuquay Verena defense. Middle Creek has been able to uh, complete. Let's see, two of three so far on third down here tonight. 
on this opening drive for their offense. Brown heading to Liberty next season. He is looking to the sideline right now for uh, the play call. A lot of this uh, no huddle offense and play call changing. Five seconds on the play clock and Brown will just tiptoe into the end zone. Great blocking scheme by the Mustangs as they get in there. Another long drive, not quite as long as Fuquay Varina's, but a long drive nonetheless. And they knock this game up at six. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier, this is ha exactly how the uh, game started last year for Fuquay Varina and Middle Creek. Of course, on a different field, it was Fuquay Varina's home field uh, back at the old Bengal Stadium. And it was a missed PAT by Middle Creek to leave it tied at six apiece. We'll see what happens here as Gabe Davidson nearly does it again. He did it last week. Got in there, got the block against Garner to leave it tied seven apiece. But that will uh, give Middle Creek the lead seven to six here in the opening quarter. That drive for Middle Creek, 12 plays, 70 yards, as the quarterback Brown punches it in from the six yard line. The PAT good with 11.55 uh, left on the second quarter. Fuquay Varina down one to Middle Creek at seven to six. Are you in the market to buy or sell your home? Based in downtown Fuquay Varina, one minute from Fuquay Varina High School on Broad Street, there's one team with the knowledge and experience to help you make the best decision for you and your family. Krista Absher and her team at the Absher Realty Group have agents from many real estate backgrounds, such as previous military, national relocation, and locals. They promise to exceed your expectations. Call Krista Absher at 919-753-6518 or theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Aisle set to kick off again for Middle Creek. As the Bengals see themselves down again tonight, long kick will go down to the two-yard line where it hits turf and now will be returned by Sakiti Uzandu. Uzandu staying on his feet, continuing to churn those legs as he brings it out to the 20-yard line where Fuquay Varina will go back on offense. Evan, I got to say, this is the time right now. I'm very curious to see, is this the Fuquay Varina that we've seen that we saw last week in the first three quarters where a touchdown didn't bother them uh, a broken play didn't bother them a big play by the other team didn't bother them or is this the team of previous years and previous games this season where just a little thing can tip the scales and put them on the wrong side of the ball yeah this drive can really define how you're going to play the rest of the game this is a really big drive for the Bengals Handoff to the left-hand side. Sheparel gets the call again. He goes about eight yards. Nice carry. I hate to see that Uzandu has really not had much success in the last couple weeks. Uh, but I I'm glad to see the play call shifting. I'm sure he he's got to understand it. He's got to want the team to continue to succeed, and his night is not over. But I love seeing Connor Sheparel, who really had some good uh, good games in the beginning part of the season, the middle part of the season. I love to see him get that play call and get seven and a half, maybe eight yards there. Braswell was two for four through the air on that opening drive, but it was Matthew Lyons, 60 of those 80 yards on five carries. He's had a big night already tonight. Connor Sheparel with the carry again, but right there in the backfield, a big tackle coming through. I believe that was Quincy Pugh again. He's had a busy night already here tonight for Middle Creek. That'll be a loss. Backs it up to third down and four to go. A loss of two on that carry. Got to mix it up a little bit here now as Chaparral is going to come to the sideline. He got banged up on that one. Big third down here for the offense. The Bengals have already gone two for two on fourth down. You don't want to have to force yourselves into that again as Braswell's going to keep it. Had the pitch man, but it can take this himself. No problem. Gets the first down on about a six, maybe seven yard gain on the left-hand side. That read option is going to be there tonight for him again. And that looked good with Lions there for the, uh, for the option for him. 
Yeah, I really want, want to see the Bengals continue just to run it outside. I mean, you can do the option, you can do the pitch, you can do the jet sweep. All, any any outside run has seemed to really work for them. And, and boy, you run it outside three, four, five times in a row, maybe throw it through the air, and that opening, uh, that middle is going to open right back up for you. Uh, that's a great point, Evan. One split out to the right-hand side for Braswell. This will be a read option again. It's going to be a pitch to Jackson Barker, who nearly broke that one. Barker uh, got the pitch late, and right there defensively on him was Luke McDonald for the tackle. That will be a loss, believe it or not, with that penetration there by McDonald, a loss of about three, second down and 13 coming now. Second down, 13. Man in motion is Lions. Braswell will hand it off this time. That will be a carry up the middle on second down. That does not go for much as Jackson Barker's second carry, uh, not very successful either. So after really a couple good weeks for Jackson Barker, he's gotten some, um, not necessarily the earliest calls here tonight. And we do have an injured player down now. Um, Looks like that could be in the area of the center. I wonder if that is, no, Colby Humphreys is still uh, up. <laughs> 68 would be Matthew Bell, the right guard. He's gonna have to come out for one play, but it's good to see him back up on his feet. Now we're gonna have third down and 12 coming up here for the Bengals as they did get a uh, one yard gain on that one. Coach, um, in, in not part of the coach's comments, it wasn't uh, recorded, but Coach Hall said he was really happy to see this year. Last year, the Bengals were just a mess before this game. The, their energy was so high that it was almost un uncontrollable. This year, he said, controlled, even keeled throughout the week, and he was really proud to see that. There is... Braswell rolls out to the left-hand side. Has some room now. The blockers didn't set up. Now a late nice block. block coming in. Man, that one's Not sure that's legal, but we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get a uh, Mustang slow to come up to his feet. Sorry, uh, the play so there's, interrupted you. There's a, uh, it's called performance arousal theory, and it's, it's an inverted horseshoe, and the idea is there's an optimal arousal level. And now a flag coming in against Middle Creek. That is going to give Fuquay Verena an automatic first down. I'm not sure if that came from Randy Raglan himself or because he turned around immediately. I'm not sure if he was talking to someone on his sideline, but that is a huge game changer in this one. So, performance <laughs> arousal there. Yes, sir. It's an inverted horseshoe. There's an optimal arousal level for different sports. Uh, your, your focus narrows, your, you have the flight or fight response. So different, different activities require a different arousal level for optimal performance. When you're, when you, you're a football player, you know, your quarterback needs to be calmer than your offensive line, let's say. So you, when you get so jacked up for that Middle Creek game coming up, you know, you, you lose some of your thought process. Your, your thought process slow down. Uh, your perception is, is narrowed, so you do not necessarily see all the options that you have for you. So it, it's good that they're at a little calmer level. And I'm just going to give Raglan a little tip here. Yell at your assistant coaches. You can yell at your assistant coaches all you want. You yell at the referee, that's a no-no. Turn around, yell at your assistant coaches. And, again, I'm not, the way he reacted to it, I'm not sure if he turned around upset at one of his coaches and that, that's well, they can yell at, They can yell at each other, too. Right, they don't, right, right. No, they don't need to yell at the referee either. But I would not <laughs> be surprised if he was just – laying on those officials for the hit that Fuquay Verena put on. I, I can't imagine that it's about anything else. So Ra uh, Raglan actually calls the timeout to give uh, the officials his extra 10 seconds um, uh, after that call, and I imagine he'll leave it alone now. But a big change with that penalty well, coming in. It, the it wasn't like the, the block. W it wasn't in the back. It was just it was behind the play. It was going towards your own end zone, so it may be questionable. But it wasn't, it wasn't a cheap shot. He didn't hit him in the knees. He didn't hit him in the back. 
it was just a good solid block that right. 10 years ago nobody will look twice at. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good point. First down and 10, Fuquay Verena now inside Mustang territory with new life. There's that Garner play again. Pass goes over the middle. He's open. Ethan Burke with some pressure behind him. That was a good defensive play just to reach that arm around in there and tip that ball away. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. I'm thinking he might have been <laughs> held on to the receiver's arms. That, that very well could be, absolutely. Let's toss it off to our Golden Pipes, Luke Anderson. There's one team in the triangle that has the best game plan for selling your home. It starts with a well-priced home, which will often generate competing offers and drive up the final sale price. The players you want on your side are the Absher Realty Group. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today and tell them you want to be on Team Absher. Thank you very much. Second down and 10 now from the 48-yard line. Man in motion from the left-hand side. This will be Nigel Pierce. He pushes off one would-be defender. And now a second with a stiff arm. Carries it up to the 46, sorry, 36-yard line where that will be a first down for Fuquay Verena. Big run on the end around from Nigel Pierce. We seem to be doing better when I'm not paying so much attention. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with, but we are certainly glad to have you here regardless. And uh, that's a nice lapel pin you got there. Thank you for that. Big game tomorrow night. I'm sure we'll hear about that at halftime. Make sure to stay tuned for Bengals at the half. Could have been bigger. Presented by <laughs> Dickens Insurance Agency. Lions goes in motion from the right wing. He'll be pitch man number two, let's call it. There were two of them there. I'm not sure if that was uh, confusion maybe. I'm not not sure you need two pitch men. Did you forward that play I gave Jeb? I never did. I'm Come sorry. On, it, was a, it was a busy week. I wanted to see that thing out here. I was going to take credit for it and everything. That, <laughs> it, was, it looked like a few quay play, did. though, It didn't absolutely it? did, except that he didn't score. I was, I was disappointed in that. Some might say that would look like a Fuquay play. No. <laughs> Incidentally, oh. speaking yes. of Fuquay, Not wrong. I came straight from Barton College. Okay. Barton has a player. Yeah. I think I've seen about that. Fuquay. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> That's how she was introduced, <laughs> from Fuquay Verena. <coughs> That's probably some of the better ways it's been pronounced. And Pierce will get the end around again and another nice stiff arm. He makes the yardage back up as he gets it up to the 34-yard line. Good carry by Pierce. He's had a busy, busy couple carries, and he's doing his part. Speaking of Barton, our very own Mr. Wheelie coaches the cross there. That, that is correct. I was uh, officiating volleyball. I did not see our very own Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> I did see a lot of the cross shirts, though. The LAX is quite the popular sport in North Carolina these days. Yeah. It's called their called their inaugural match on the. Uh, is that what they have? They R3 have matches. Sports Network. Uh, I'm not confident of that, um, but it seems like a game that would have a match, don't you think? Uh, a fixture. We met uh, moves from the right tight end over to the left hand side. Now Braswell will back up on third down. Fuquay Verena is going to have to call the timeout here. That will be their second of the first half. I was, I was, my middle school's last football game yesterday was yesterday, and we had one of one of these situations, and I saw somebody motion into the backfield, and I just instinctively <laughs> assumed we were about <laughs> to have a timeout. <laughs> so true. Well, so far, let's reset the game for you here. Seven to six, Fuquay Verena trailing by one right now. Back on offense with another big and crucial third down. This drive right now I, uh, will certainly be defined by the 15-yard penalty that was um, an unsportsmanlike penalty called on the sideline of Middle Creek. Again, fourth down, and it wasn't short, I'll tell you that. And um, that moved it into Mustang territory, gave the Bengals a new set of downs and a new life here. So now the Bengals sitting at the 34-yard line looking at third down and eight with 6.13 to play on the second quarter. And again, down by one. This is the third drive of the night, second offensive series for the Bengals. The beauty of it, six minutes left in the half. If we, if we can keep uh, this low possession game, I think that works into the, into the uh, advantage of the Bengals. Certainly does. It's 33-23 as far as uh, point differential for Middle Creek in SWAC play, but that's a big stop. He's had a busy night tonight, has Quincy Pugh as he gets the tackle, and then Ben Lever coming in to help out as well. Again, Jackson Barker, they've had his number tonight, and he has not uh, been able to push the ball forward all that much as we have seen in the last couple weeks. A loss of one back to the uh, 30, uh, really a loss of two, I guess you would consider that. 
uh, back to the 36-yard line. And that will bring up fourth down and nine now. Obviously, the Bengals going to go for it again here. And we'll see if they air it out. We'll see if they do some hard snaps to try to get five more yards here. Twins receivers to the left, one to the right, one left, one wing on the left as well. Barker's going to be the blocker, and the pass will go to the left side. Nigel Pierce is leveled on the Middle Creek sideline. That'll be a turnover on downs at the 31-yard line. Bengals couldn't complete that series there, and the Mustangs will have it back in their offensive hands. Not sure about... You know, the, the waggle pass, I mean, he threw, it was a well-thrown ball on target, had an open receiver. You have him throwing across his body. You take half the field out of the play, and you throw it five yards short of the down to gain, the yard to game. I'm not sure about uh, the thought process there. I'm not sure if the secrets of Fuquay Verena are about to be unlocked here uh, in, the, in the booth. We'll explain this here. In just a moment, there's a lock and key set. This will be a nice hit. To the right hand or the left hand side, and it is Fuquay Verena's Shea Pittman who comes into the backfield and upends the running back. Prenovo with the carry again. That'll be a loss of three. Second down and 13. Oh, it's Heaster. It's the Heaster Bowl. That's what's going on. They're going to be unlocking maybe the keys to the. Peaster car here in just a little bit. <coughs> Make the presentation. Brown, fake yeah. handoff, pass over the middle is, is that complete? No, Pick it up. Say incomplete. I didn't hear it. Pick it up. Yeah, that's right. Why assume? Pick it up. Absolutely. Good break up there. Good timing by the defense. Evan, did you see who, uh, who was in on that? I want to say it was Linkus. Okay. Caden Linkus, I, I missed the number. Gabe Davidson in there late. I think he was the one who bent over to uh, to try to pick that one up. Third down, 13 now. Big third down here. If the Bengals can get a quick three and out, that would be huge. Nice pass, pass to the right-hand side, wide open. Gabe Davidson trying to chase him down. Gets the shoestring tackle, saves the touchdown. Big completion, moving it into Bengal territory. Here is the situation where Fuquay Verena has to wipe that one off. Pass complete to Tate Jones and not allow that to change this contest here for the Bengals. We didn't bring you keys to the game in the uh, Bengal game day show tonight, but I've got just two. On offense, effort. On defense, effort. Brown fakes the handoff, carries to the left-hand side. We're going to see a flag tonight. This is, what, really only the second in-game penalty that we've seen all night tonight or maybe even the first it's holding against middle creek that's going to back them up and slow down this offense just a little bit here clock stops with 420 left to play on the second quarter seven to six fuquay varina and middle creek and it's the mustangs with the one point advantage Bengals got the ball to start the contest. It will be the Mustangs who will get the opening kickoff, kickoff of the second half. So limiting scoring here is certainly crucial on first down and 17. Brown looking to pass. Passes on a screen to the left-hand side. Great job there by, I believe that was Carlin. Jacob Medlin, excuse me, he had him by the fingertips but then uh, just couldn't quite pull him down. Nice reception by the leading receiver, Jamori Ellis. He did his job. Yep. He slowed him down. It was just a lack of pursuit to the ball. You've got to have guys rushing to the ball. Gain of about six, second down and 11 coming up now. I mean, Clock rolling ahead. For him to have him held up that long yeah. and still give up six yards, you can't have that. Shotgun snap, nobody in the backfield with Brown. Looking to pass, plenty of time to do so. And he will pass complete to the right-hand side. Right there on him was, I believe, Gabe Davidson. And he makes an excellent tackle. And the uh, completion to Darius Boone. 
You, got, you have to get more penetration than that. You've got to get deeper than the quarterback to limit that, that escape out there. If we keep him in the pocket, that throw doesn't get made. Now you're giving them a fourth and manageable. Connor Rosenblum was trying to track him down but just didn't have the speed to get to him. Fake handoff. This will be a pass over the middle. Will be tipped and complete. Couple of Bengals rolling off of him, but uh, good stop. They're going to say that's enough, though, as the completion was up to the 19-yard line, enough for a first down. Looked like they might have stopped him just enough, but uh, in fact, the chains move forward. Caden Linkus in on the tackle with a couple others. Linkus is now the leading tackler. He holds on to that from uh, the last couple weeks, really. Caden Link is the leading tackler with 32 coming into this game here tonight. Again, follow along with us. Live stats presented by Creative Wiring Solutions, r3sports.org slash Bengals. Make a play. Floating Make a the play. pass up and through the arms of the defender into the hands of the receiver for the touchdown. That. I, that is a killer play because you are there. He was there. there. He was right there. Thought, I thought we had a pick, nothing but green grass in front of him. Thought it was going to be a pick and a lot of guard yards. Mm. Not sure what happened there. That is why he's playing on this side of the ball. And that will set up a PAT here. The lead now up to seven. Trying to extend this to eight. And Davidson getting happy feet there. He jumps off and... <laughs> Trying to get that block in there to keep it at a seven point game. Half the distance to the goal will uh, retry the PAT that was not yet really attempted. Bengals will have two minutes, 20 seconds to work with on offense. And again, just as we've been talking about, you cannot let that play define the rest of this contest. Davidson in there again, man, diving for it. But the PAT is good, two for two on the night. Gabe Davidson, we're going to hate to see him go. He has had an excellent season. We hate that um, his injury. Um, so he actually went out, and they thought it was an ACL. Turned out it was bursitis, and he was able to return. So um, great story for him. Hate that he missed as much time as he did because he was really a spark for the defense of Fuqua Varina. But he is back. That drive for the Mustangs, seven plays for 69 yards as the uh, pass was complete. 56, is that 55? Just five, got it. <laughs> Pass complete to Therius Suggs for the touchdown of 19 yards for the 14 to six lead as Fuquay Varina is uh, trailing by eight now. Again, big return would be huge here and you've got to wipe it off. You've got to play for the next play, the next series, the next set of downs. Um, Bengals have been bitten a couple times this season by letting big plays define the rest of their game. That's a, that's a function of youth. Low line drive kick will one hop into the arms of Sakiti Uzandu, or is that, uh, no, excuse me, that's Shea Pittman. Pittman gets the return. He had some speed on there up to about the 22, 20, or excuse me, 25 or 20, 27 yard line where it'll be first down and 10. Uh, Coach, I, I think, Coach Hall would have liked to maybe do a little bit more to the field today, uh, getting ready for this game here tonight. Unfortunately, some Mustangs uh, made their way onto Bengal Stadium last night, despite all the cameras, and uh, painted some things uh, on the field as Those the Bengal box, will <laughs> Bengal box will set up on the left-hand side. Thugs and stooges. Toss sweep to Lions, looking for the block to set up. I've been waiting for that misdirection to come all season long, or, or for the last few weeks when we've seen the, the Bengal box set up on the left-hand side. Obviously, there's not as much blocking on the right, but they've seen it week in and week out now for the last three or four weeks. Why not go to the unblock or to the the weak side and take that ball the other way and see Aren't if it Aren't they don't. from Apex? Who, Middle Creek? Yes. 
Apex carry Fuquay. Aren't they the it's peak kind of, of higher living? The peak and of good don't, living, thank you They very don't much. teach their children better than to go out and vandalize in public school property. Pass goes incomplete on the right-hand side. <laughs> To, uh, Where are the parents? Jackson Barker. That's a good question. Supervise your children. That Stop letting them go out there and tear stuff up. Few Quay people question. don't do that. They hang out at cookout and leave stuff alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a history of mutual transgressions there. But, uh, we're, mutual, not talking, <laughs> mutual we're not talking about previous years. We're talking mutual about transgressions. <laughs> I like that terminology. I think we did some SAT stuff. words <laughs> flowing. Third down and eight coming up here. Big third down for Fuquay. You've got to get something going here. You don't want to give it back into the hands of Middle Creek with any time left on the clock here in the first half. Rolling out to the right-hand side. Pressure will throw not in front of, or was it? Or was it beyond the, uh, it was beyond the line of scrimmage. So Jacob Braswell will get away with that play. Where was this guy when all these 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 mischievous sure happenings. Sure, he was were practicing place. or studying. This guy over here. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were let's, saying Evan. Let's get on the get on the stick. Let's keep an eye on things. Yeah. Protect and serve. Don't let the field get torn up. <laughs> that will bring up fourth down, and Fuquay will set to, uh, be set to punt it away for the first time here tonight. On fourth and eight. A little bit of uh, room back there in the backfield. Nice punt away by Lions. Couple blocks spinning around on the return man. The return man is Braden Harrison. Not a huge return. Now another flag coming in here. This will be on the Middle Creek sideline or near the Middle Creek sideline. But uh, there was a scrum of players, if you will, and one Bengal in the middle of that circle. So we'll see who this goes against. I think that was a fine example. And it is ambush. a personal foul, actually, not unsportsmanlike conduct, but personal foul called against Middle Creek. So that'll back them up 15 yards. And at this point, uh, that's helpful, and that's a good thing to see because um, with a minute 16 left on the second quarter clock, that's still plenty of time to work with for these Middle Creek Mustangs and two timeouts left. I didn't even realize we had orange numbers planted out there on the field. They're pretty faint, aren't they? I not see them. Yep. The 50 was repainted today, it looks like, but that is about it. And again, still don't have my hash marks. <laughs> That's right. He's he's still doing some. Uh, Back in our day, we called that the number sign. <laughs> rounding uh, tonight, if nothing else. Trips to the right, twins to the left. Brown fumbles the ball, has to fall down on it. That was an opportunity there, and that I'm not real sure what happened there. Just um, maybe not real really paying attention was Brown. Brown on the season again. 10 interceptions and four fumbles as well. So he's had a little bit of issue uh, with turnovers here this season. That'll be a loss of almost a full 10. We lost uh, camera for you here for just a moment. We'll give you the picture through words. Brown will tuck it. He rolls to his right-hand side, passes complete, and uh, then just levels the uh, defender. And the completion is made. Timeout will be called on the uh, Mustang sideline with 35 seconds left. That's a gain of nearly 15, uh, let's say nearly 12 yards maybe uh, as the completion is made up to the 28-yard line. Timeout called by Middle Creek. And they will have one left to call here in the second half. Evan, um, this is crunch time right now for the defense. Again, Middle Creek's getting it back to start the second half. And so this is the time the Bengals really need to stop here. Don't let Middle Creek um, get the get the score here, and then you've got to make a big stop to start off the second half as well. Yeah, you've got to get a stop before halftime, especially with them getting the ball back. And um, get a stop here, going to halftime with, I guess, not the momentum, but you got to feel good if you're the Bengals going into half down eight to a really good Middle Creek team. Come in the second half, get a big stop, and make get your offense the ball. Well, and boy, we've seen some penalties really mess with Fuquay Verena um, in, in the past. Um, tonight, Middle Creek has kick themselves in the foot with two huge 15-yard penalties. And the Bengals have to see that, too, and capitalize on those opportunities. Yeah, that one 15-yarder obviously extended the drive for the Bengals, and then this one pushed back this drive where they looked like they were going to get the ball at the 40. They're now pushed back all the way to the 24. Line to gain is about the 34. 
Brown with the shotgun snap. Passes to the right-hand side. He gets it complete, and he will be thrown out of bounds. Would have liked to have seen, was that Briley maybe throw him inbounds <laughs> to keep the clock rolling, but a tackle nonetheless, a good wrap-up tackle, as uh, that might have been the only opportunity uh, to throw him out of bounds and get that clock to stop with 28.2 left on the second quarter. So our cameraman uh, is borderline unresponsive from the cold and uh -oh. wishes to come down during halftime. All right, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll be happy to move the clock or the uh, camera down. Uh, we'll do some finagling uh, during the timeout, and uh, we'll get him on the inside and, and keep him warm. I can certainly understand that. Dead ball, false start will be called against Middle Creek. So, boy, talk Another about costly some penalty, penalty yeah. issues tonight. That will back him up five yards, and uh, the ball will be placed on the 35, or excuse me, the 30. Did you really just walk that one off? I'm sorry. The ball was sitting on the 35. You can just go ahead back and put it and sit it on the 30. <laughs> the near line judge marked it off five yards. Uh, I guess that's just procedure. Brown looking to pass again, does so on the right-hand side. Completes, they will say for a gain of about 12, maybe 13. We'll bring up second down and eight clock stops with 18.3 on the second quarter. Just chipping away at this one, but again, the Bengals need, I wish I could be in the helmets of the Bengals right now to give them the uh, encouragement here. You just, you can give them to the one with all the time you want to give them but give them nothing else, and you have come out of this with success. The yards do not matter. The points certainly do. He cuts inbound. inside, inbound. and the tackle will be made. They're going to wave him off for the stoppage of the clock. Not sure if that's for the first down or if they're no saying that was. Yeah, it certainly didn't look like he was going to get there. And the timeout will be called. So the tackle was made inbounds. <laughs> Ta timeout called by. Middle Creek, that will be their third and final as Fuquay Arena still has one more left. 11 seconds left on the second quarter clock. So big, big, mate two, maybe three. If you can really play smart with the ball and, and play smart with your time, you can uh, maybe get three plays in in 11 seconds. That would be stretching it, especially with no timeouts. You've got to be thrown to the sideline. You've got to imagine that Middle Creek's thrown through their own sideline. That's all they've done here in this series, and um, that's what the Bengals have to remember now. Don't get beat by something different from that. Um, yeah, can't let someone get behind you, and I would I don't know how good their kicker is, but I would say 25 He comes from Middle Creek, so he's, he's got a leg. He's I'm, got I'm a leg, sure. so I'm saying 25-yard-ish, <laughs> 30-ish yard line would be his range, so just you yeah. know, keep him in the 40s, the 35s, and you'd be good to go. And at this point, they just want an opportunity to try that kick. You're exactly right. Right at the uh, midfield here at the 50-yard line, first down and 10. Brown will look for the shotgun snap. He gets it. He will roll out to his left and attempt there. This will be possibly the last play as Brown's going to run to the sideline. 2.1 where he runs out of bounds, and that was great. Great defense downfield. That was key, and you mentioned it. Uh, Evan, you've got to have that coverage. That was key to wiping off those nine seconds off of this clock. And a smart play by Shea Pittman. You know, you got a rival. You see a quarterback scrambling out. You want to lay that hit on him. And oh. if he lays that hit on him, that's 15 yards. They're attempting a the field goal right now. That, yeah, that's your field goal. Exactly. Now they're attempting a Hail Mary pass. Just play one good play of solid defense. You go into half, only down eight. Middle Creek doesn't have a timeout. Yeah, you can't. That's it. You don't have any more. Uh... Yeah, you got to come back. So uh, the White Hat is calling Middle Creek back to the field. I hope the play clock is running <laughs> uh, by the back judge because already the time that they've received on the sideline is more than they should have been given. First down and 10 with 2.1. And he hasn't, hasn't whistled it in yet, so I uh, hate that. But um, officials need to know a little better there. They need to have that count in their head because that is uh, beneficial just to stop this altogether here. Regardless, trips to the right, one split out to the left. This is likely to be the last play. Now a timeout will be called by Fuquay Varina as uh, the defense needs to get this one right. This is a huge play here, and you gotta get this one right. Let's reset it for you. Fuquay Varina, no timeouts. Middle Creek, no timeouts. It's 14 to six. 
Middle Creek with the lead right now with 2.1 left to play on the second quarter clock. Brown has been uh, very good through the air tonight. You can follow along with us with live stats presented to you by Creative Wiring Solutions. Visit r3sports.org slash Bengals, and you can follow those along with us. Perfect on the night tonight on third down. Six for six. That is impressive, and it has looked just as such. Brown is 13 of 16 through the air for 151 yards. That, as well, is very impressive. He's got one touchdown on the ground, one touchdown through the air as well, and uh, he looks at 40 yards of field in front of him with first down and 10. Let's see what the Bengal defense can do here in Bengal territory. Brown with trips to the right, one to the left. He will get a snap off his right hand. Pressure in the backfield, couldn't get that one. Long pass down the middle, got to knock this one down. Incomplete, just barely. What a stop. Whew, that was nerve wracking. Bengals at the half, coming your way next. It's presented to you by Dickens Insurance Agency. We're going to move the camera around for you, and then we are going to bring you the uh, Bengal marching band as well. Lots of excitement here at Bengal Stadium. Uh, the marching band seniors will also be recognized tonight. We'll have that uh, presentation for you as well. Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek, an eight point game right now as the Mustangs have the lead 14 to six on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. When my husband and I decided to start a family, we knew we needed to plan for the future. We contacted Dickens Insurance Agency. They walked us through all the important information about life and annuity products, and they told us how we could save even more by combining our auto, home, and life insurance plans. The best part is, they talked with us like we're their neighbors, not like their clients. Visit Dickens Insurance Agency at 402 Wake Chapel Road or online at dickensinsurance.com. Dickens Insurance Agency, a proud supporter of Bengal Athletics. Houses in the triangle are selling quickly. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have someone on your side making sure you get every penny your home is worth. Krista Absher and her team at the Absher Realty Group want to make selling your home as stress-free and seamless as possible, and they'll help you find your next home, whether you're upsizing, downsizing, moving across the street, or across the country. Next time you're at Bengal Stadium, look to the scoreboard for contact information from this network's presenting sponsor and a premier Bengal Booster Club sponsor. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Hey, honey, where should we eat tonight? Let's see. Oh, how about the Aviator Smokehouse? I want to try their buffalo fried chicken wrap. Oh, yeah, we should start with the beer batted onion rings. Ooh, and how about some smokehouse ribs? Then maybe I'll go with the... Whoa there, Tiger. We can go again later. You don't have to try it all tonight. I know, I know. Maybe I'll just add the smokehouse salad on the side, too? <laughs> Whatever you say, dear. Aviator Smokehouse at the corner of Broad and Stewart. Online at aviatorbrew.com slash smokehouse. Welcome into Bengals at the Half, presented by Dickens Insurance Agency. It's time to break down the first half with stats and analysis. We'll take a look around the triangle with scores from tonight's matchups. And we'll preview this weekend's action on the college and professional gridirons. But first, let's step off the gridiron and meet the Bengals, a new student athlete each week. Here's your host for Bengals at the Half, Evan Rogers. We are going to bring you the player profile here in just a moment. I want you to be able to hear the uh, presentation of the marching band singer, seniors, and we'll bring that to you now. Howard University studied political science and become a civil rights lawyer. Ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Griffin. Trinity Kearney. Trinity is escorted tonight by her parents, Arthur and Brenda Baker. She plays the flute and piccolo. Trinity has participated in North Carolina State Band Day and enjoys writing songs, including the lyrics, instrumentals, and dances. After high school, she plans to attend Wake Tech and transfer to James Madison University, majoring in special education with a minor in musical instruments and music theory. Ladies and gentlemen, Trinity, Kearney. Indrid, Leon Arredondo. Indrid is escorted by her mother, Elizabeth Arredondo, and her sister, Allie Leon Arredondo. 
Ingrid plays the trumpet. She is the band concert manager and has participated in the Triangle Youth Brass Band. Her future plans include going to Wake Tech and East Carolina University to pursue a career in pediatric dentistry. Ladies and gentlemen, Ingrid Leon Arredondo. Jesus Martinez Martinez. Jesus is escorted tonight by his father, Rashilo. Rash, Raglio Martinez Castro. I apologize. Jesus plays baritone and is the low brass section leader. He is a member of the National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Writing Club, Science Club, and FCCLA. His future plans include Wake Tech or a four year university to study video game development. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Martinez Martinez. Maya Randall. Maya is escorted by her parents, David and Marie Randall. She is in color guard and is the color guard captain. Maya is a member of the National Honor Society, National English Honor Society, and Math Honor Society. After high school, she plans to attend North Carolina State University to get an undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering and then on to medical school to become a doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, Maya Randall. Zoe Smith. Zoe is escorted tonight by her parents, Stacy and Jennifer Smith. She is in the front ensemble and is librarian of the band program. Zoe is a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society, National English Honor Society, Key Club, and is secretary of Tri M Music Honor Society. Her future plans include attending North Carolina State University and majoring in civil engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Smith. Drew Smith. Drew is escorted by his parents, David and Brianna Gray. He plays trumpet at Bridge Horn and serves as brass captain, brass section leader, and publicity manager for the band. He is the principal horn player in the Triangle Youth Academy Brass Band and has been selected to participate in multiple university honor bands. Drew is an editor of the yearbook staff, serves as vice president of student ambassadors, historian of Tri M Music Honor Society, is a member of World Cup History Honor Societies. And English Honor Society. Last summer, Drew was selected as one of 12 participants from across the country to attend the annual Chuck Stone Program for Diversity in Education and Media at UNC Chapel Hill. Drew hopes to attend the four year university and pursue a career in secondary education. Ladies and gentlemen, Drew Griff. Yeah, when, when he's when he's done doing now, it. Now let's give a big round of applause for our marching bingo seniors. Plus, I mean, like you said, we can have a long time. What's that? So we can have a long time. That's your marching Bengal seniors. Now we will bring you the player profile here as Evan Rogers sat down with the, this week's player profile. Welcome back to Bengals at the Half, presented by Dickens Insurance. I'm here with uh, Roman Martinez for uh, the last week of uh, Player Profile at uh, for our three productions. And uh, Roman, introduce yourself a little. Hey, my name is Roman Martinez. I'm a senior at Fuqua in High School. I'm on the swim on the high school swim team, and I'm also on the club swim team for the Tac Titans. And uh, for the Bengals this year, how has your uh, season gone uh, swimming? Uh, so far, it's going pretty good. Getting back into shape was pretty tough, both mentally and physically, in and in and out the pool. And getting back to the school grind was, it was tough, but it was definitely worth it. And uh, swimming is not necessarily a, a well-known sport known uh, around here at the high school. So, what would you want someone to know? Like being a part of the uh, the Bengal swim team is like here at Fuquay. At Fuquay, it's a really good environment. There's a lot of good people on the team, and there's a lot of support. And it's not really an individual sport, even though you're swimming individually for yourself, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the whole team comes together. And uh, thank you, and uh, good luck on the remainder of your season. Thank you. Thank you again, Evan Rogers. There with our player profile, we'll have uh, Evan come back with us here in just a moment to bring you 
uh, the college football preview and a big one coming up for us tomorrow. Right now, I want to bring you the Marching Bengals, bring you one of their songs here tonight on Senior Night for them as well. You just heard the Senior Honors, and here are the Marching Bengals with their uh, performance here tonight. Once again, your Marching Bengals with their performance here tonight, Senior Nights, for not only the football players and the cheerleaders, but also the Marching Bengals. Congratulations to all of them. We're going to take a time out here, come back with more of Bengals at the Half, presented by Dickens Insurance Agency. Dickens Insurance Agency has been serving the Fuquay Verena community since 1956. Whether you need coverage for your home, your car, your business, or life insurance, Dickens Insurance Agency has the answer to your question. Give them a call at 919-552-5603. Visit them online at dickensinsurance.com or stop by and visit them in the heart of Fuquay Verena at 402 Wake Chapel Road. Dickens Insurance Agency, a proud supporter of Bengal Athletics. Your college preview for football coming up next on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Protecting your family, your home, your car is extremely important. One company that has been doing just that in Fuquay Verena since 1956 is Dickens Insurance Agency. Their agents are tried and tested and are able to handle any questions you may have regarding your insurance needs. And if you combine your personal auto, homeowners, and life insurance, let the savings start rolling in. Visit Dickens Insurance Agency at 402 Wake Chapel Road or online at dickensinsurance.com. After more than 20 years in the corporate world, Pam Castles decided to step out on her own, establishing P. Castles Law, PLLC. She's available for commercial transactional legal services, such as contracts for purchases and sales of goods and services and non-disclosure and non-compete agreements and transportation contracts. Contact Pam at 919-534-5735 or Pam at pcastleslaw.com. P. Castles Law, this year's sponsor of the players of the game. Window Effects has become the leading car and truck window tinting expert in the area. But that's not all. Window Effects has taken the same process developed for your vehicles and applied it to the doors and windows of your home or business. This process guarantees there are no imperfections in the tinting and the film has a lifetime factory warranty. Protect your home and the valuables in it. Think of Window Effects in Andrew. Search for Window Effects on Facebook. This year's Plays of the Game sponsor on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Bengals at the half rolls on as Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek. Welcome back to Bengals at the half, here. presented by oh. Dickens Insurance. I'm yeah, here with uh, Roman Martinez yep. for uh, yep. the last Switch week yep. of uh, player profile. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, into our college football preview here. Uh, Ray North alongside Evan Rogers. Coach Cole will be with us uh, to begin the second half again. Luke Anderson is our producer and Nate Perez. He's down in the warm and toasty press box now. It'll be a different angle for you for the second half, but he will be uh, running the camera for us. So let's talk a little college football. Big games coming up tomorrow, Evan. Yeah, you guys are Okay, gotcha. And I, I think despite the loss last week to Georgia Southern uh, in that Halloween game, the fact that – so if if you quit, if you quit, if Appalachian State can uh, can get the win against South Carolina tomorrow, again, two not great 
football teams, North Carolina and South Carolina, but that's two Power 5 wins. That's huge. That would be huge for the postseason. Um, lots of lots of games still to be played. Um, I'm interested to see where the Bengals, oh, geez, where the Mountaineers end up uh, in postseason play. Bowl eligible already, uh, even before last week, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think having that extra game, having that Sunbelt Conference Championship game helps a lot too. You, you add another quality win to your resume that, that the conferences who don't have those games don't get the opportunity for. So that's, that's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Whew. Huge. <laughs> wow. Man, well, and talking about not being out of it by a loss, um, I've been thinking about Auburn. My dad went to Auburn, big Auburn fan. Um, been thinking about Auburn. With still having Georgia and Alabama yet to play, and then you, you wouldn't qualify for the SEC championship. I think it would be hard to get in with two losses. But even with that, with Georgia and Alabama, if they come into those games undefeated, or sorry, Georgia's already lost one, but <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I, w I want to see the four, the eight game, the eight team playoff. Come on. Yeah, sure. Well, and they were talking. Uh, what I saw somebody put it together. Uh, not Chris Winkie. Um, oh, who was it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. He he put together so um, five. What was it? Five power fives. Three group of five. And then an at-large, I, I, I don't know. That makes eight already right there, but let's do it. Let's, let's go to eight. It's time. Yeah. I'll. Yes, yes, by far. Absolutely. Right. You'd have to play the whole season in the tournament. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much, Evan. We will uh, continue on with the Bengals at the half presented by Dickens Insurance Agency. Have your live stats for you coming up on the other side of this timeout. But first... Have you gotten your all-sports season pass yet? The Fuquay Verena Athletic Booster Club's goal is to provide support and information to students, faculty, parents, and the community about Bengal athletics. Get your membership today. Visit fbhsboosterclub.com. Thank you very much. Timeouts uh, we will take right here, and we'll come back with your stats from the first half and more of Bengals at the Half presented by Dickens Insurance Agency on the other side of this timeout on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Krista Absher and her team at the Absher Realty Group dedicate their time and lives to helping you make one of the biggest decisions of your life, buying and selling your home. The real estate market in the Triangle is one of the best housing markets in the country, and you will want the most professional, experienced, trained, and knowledgeable agents on your side helping you. Lucky for you, they're based on Broad Street just a minute from the high school. Mention this ad and receive a free home warranty with your next home purchase. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. 
The Aviator Smokehouse was established in Fuquay Verena in 2011 and features some of the finest food Broad Street has to offer. You've got to try their famous aviator wings with dry rub or maybe the sweet and tangy hickory aviator sauce. If you're really brave, you can attempt the Imperial Moco Loco sauce, but you'd better have a cool beverage standing by. That's just a small sample of what's available at the Aviator Smokehouse. There's something there for everyone, so stop by today. The Smokehouse is at the corner of Broad and Stewart or online at aviatorbrew.com smokehouse. When I met Arnie and Monty Bullock of Dickens Insurance Agency, I could tell they bleed orange. They're connected to the Fuquay Verena community and are committed to helping the community protect its assets. Whether it's your family, your personal property, or your business, Dickens Insurance Agency is there for you. Contact Fuquay Verena alumni Arnie or Monty or any of the agents at Dickens Insurance Agency at 919-552-5603. Visit them online at dickensinsurance.com or stop by and visit them in the heart of Fuquay Verena at 40. To Wake Chapel Road. 14 to 6 the score right now at halftime. Fuquay, Verena, and Middle Creek. The Mustangs with the lead here as we get you ready for half number two. They're going to likely put some more time, I hope, put some more time up on the uh, halftime clock here. We haven't seen them not do that all season long, but we'll be ready for you if they do. Uh, taking a look at stats for you right now, Braswell, 3 of 8 for 11 yards passing, but some key passes even though the, that yardage is down. 103 yards on the ground, 62 of those going to Matt Lyons. His numbers slowed after that first series, obviously. Uh, we'll see what the offense has in store coming up in the second half. On the other side, 14 of, uh, excuse me, 13 of 16 was Sean Brown in the first half. He had an excellent night through the air, 151 passing yards, almost had a huge one there for 40 yards at the end, but a good defensive stand. Uh, Prenevo with uh, 29 rushing yards, and uh, the leading receiver right now is Suggs with 60 yards. He's got a touchdown as well. We'll take our final timeout, come back with uh, the second half on the other side of this timeout. Bengals trailing right now by 8, 14 to 6 on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Getting the most for your home or property means doing more than putting a for sale sign out front. In a competitive market where new homes for sale are added daily, your listing needs to be seen in a variety of places in order to stand out. To ensure your home gets noticed and sells without a hitch for full market value, consider working with a top professional at the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty. Krista and her team will put together a strategic pricing and marketing plan to get your home sold quickly. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Wingin' It Tap House and Grill didn't just remodel their name. They remodeled their restaurant to give you the best eating and entertainment experience possible. Whether you like a place to meet and eat with friends, listen to a local band, or challenge your buddy to a round of bingo, Wingin' It Tap House and Grill is the place to be in Fuquay Marina. Wingin' It Tap House and Grill is located in the Five Point Center next to Sheets on the east side of Fuquay Marina. New name, same great place. When my husband and I decided to start a family, we knew we needed to plan for the future. We contacted Dickens Insurance Agency. They walked us through all the important information about life and annuity products, and they told us how we could save even more by combining our auto, home, and life insurance plans. The best part is, they talked with us like we're their neighbors, not like their clients. Visit Dickens Insurance Agency at 402 Wake Chapel Road or online at dickensinsurance.com. Dickens Insurance Agency, a proud supporter of Bengal Athletics. That is going to wrap up the Bengals at the half presented by Dickens Insurance Agency. We brought you live stats just a moment ago. Live stats for you brought to you by Creative Wiring Solutions each and every week. Creative Wiring Solutions has been a leader in home theater installations since 2002. From the Triangle to the Coast, Creative Wiring Solutions proudly serves throughout all of North Carolina. Expect the best to call Creative Wiring Solutions to start your install today. 919-557-6900 or visit creativewiring.com. And want to say a big shout out, to, as always, to Dickens Insurance Agency. They were our original presenting sponsor back in 2015 to start things off and since have not let us down. They've been our uh, halftime sponsor each and every week. Big thanks to Arnie and Monty Bullock and everybody at Dickens Insurance Agency for keeping us going strong. Uh, on uh, Bengals at the half, and this will be our last one of the season, so uh, hope to have them back and hope to have you back with us next week as well.
Are you getting the most out of your insurance policy? Whether it's life, homeowners, or business insurance, Dickens Insurance Agency will sit down with you and walk you through every step of the process. Contact Fuqua Verena alumni, Arnie and Monty Bullock at Dickens Insurance Agency at 919-552-5603 or visit them online at dickensinsurance.com or stop by and visit them in the heart of Fuqua Verena at 402 Wick Chapel Road. Dickens Insurance Agency, a proud supporter of Bengal Athletics. Thank you very much, Luke. Evan, I know there's uh, one important game going on in the SWAC here tonight, and that is determining second place. Um, have you seen an update on that? I think we've got a halftime score for that one, right? Yeah, the, the last time I checked, we got Garner over Friendship 14-0. That's obviously a really big game for playoff implications for sure. And then the big game between <laughs> Apex and South Garner, who will get the, the first conference win first conference win and even though both team played in low <laughs> and got the win this will be this the first win, win of the season and uh yeah. apex is up 29 to 8 over the titans so. wow i heard somebody say was it last week saying you know what i think uh i think south garner could get them and it's just and that there's just, something that about just proves the show i mean <laughs> i don't know if friendship did it but i don't remember them having a football team when they were just at juniors i i'm if no, i recall uh, they waited till they had seniors and I was surprised. They when had I a heard. team, but they weren't playing. In they conference. weren't playing. Yeah, and were they? I don't know if they had a varsity team till they had. Did they? They had a varsity team because Fuqua actually played them in a non-conference game the year before they joined the SWAC. So they did have that. Okay. But but you're you're right. They did not play conference games. They weren't in a conference at all. Onside kick, bumped, uh, knocked up in the air. Fuqua near it. Do they have it? Pinballed off a helmet. It looked like Fuquay could have gotten there, did they? Somebody is down hurt. It looks like Fuquay's got it. Bingo ball! We were talking about it before the kick that Fuquay should kick this onside. The first mark was to Fuquay. Mustangs are saying that they have it, but it is Fuquay ball. The Bengals are going to have it on offense in Mustang territory to start off the second half. <laughs> You've got one job. You've got one job. job. Pick, up the, pick up the headphones. i got a cross coach from another county talking to me. <laughs> Handoff, Sakidi Uzandu taking it to the left-hand side, pinballing off a couple players, now gets thrown down, and mu mu the uh, Mustang staying on him. And uh, still no gain, actually a loss of one for Sakidi Uzandu on that opening carry. He's just not got anything going for him here tonight. What do you think of the onside kick there, Coach? That's something that Evan and I, I were talking off uh, off the broadcast about a little bit, but I love it. Hey, when you got a dummy like that standing across from you, you just knock it off <laughs> of him, you recover it. <laughs> right off of him, and then it pinballed up off a helmet. And Bengals now set up on the left hash. We met, moves from the left tight end now to the right. Bengals come set. Lions goes in motion. Uzandu gets the carry again, this time positive yardage. And he carries it ahead for four, maybe five yards. Going to bring up third down and uh, probably about five. Oh, was it Connor? Yep. Connor Chaparral in and got the carry. Thank you. Third down and five now. Six-yard gain for Connor. Big third down here for the Bengals. Handoff. Sheparel again. Lowers his shoulder. Fights for yardage. Gets the first down on the six-yard carry. Oh, you ready to go? Yes, <laughs> Sorry about that. First down for the Bengals as we've got an offensive lineman who now subs in. Bengals down 14 to six, and it's Dylan Solomon back in the game. Wide receiver out to the left-hand side. Fake handoff by Braswell, he carries it to the right. Late pitch to Jackson Barker. Barker had some tough time going in the first half. Gets a big gain here, gets another first down as he's inside the 15. Coach, I'm sorry that you missed it last week as uh, Braswell was doing a ton with that toss sweep, or with the um, the uh, read option, 
and uh, it worked very well for him last week. It's working well again now here in the second half for Braswell in the offense of the Bengals. Yeah, you caught it a late pitch, but it was a good pitch. It was well-timed. Sucked the defense into him and got the ball out on the perimeter. Braswell does the same thing. No, this time he hands off to Sheparel on the left-hand side, and that's read well by the defense. In there is Luke McDonald. He's had a busy night tonight. A couple others as well. Looks like Quincy Pugh got in there as well. A short loss. I'll say maybe a full yard, so let's say second down and 11 here. And that's where the read comes into it. When he saw that end crashing in, that's when you have to, you have to pull it out of the out of the back's gut and take it back out to the outside. Second down and 11. Man in motion is Lyons. He gets the quick handoff, goes to the wide side of the field, cuts it up now, has the blocker, puts a stiff arm out, reaches for the goal line. Does he have it? Yes! Touchdown, Bengals! Huge run by Matthew Lyons. Give him 23. That gets him just a couple yards short of a, th of a hundred tonight. Big run for Matthew Lyons, and the Bengals are a two-point conversion away from nodding this one up. All of a sudden, after PATs have been very successful for the Bengals the last two weeks and really into the South Garner game, Bengals have struggled with Matt Jones just missing his PATs. You got to go for two here anyway to get it to try to get up to 14 as well and not this contest up Connor Sheparel gets the play call but not able to find the end zone and that will leave it a two-point deficit at 14 to 12. They talk a lot of times about chasing points that's a situation where you don't need to chase those points go ahead and take that PAT get the one and, and I, I understand what you're saying it's been iffy but go ahead and get the one and, and put yourself in a better situation. It's still early in the half. It's too early to chase that extra point. Six plays for 48 yards and the touchdown by Matthew Lyons, a big one here for, for the uh, senior on senior night, a 24-yard touchdown, but no two-point conversion there. So the Bengals trailing by two, 14 to 12. Big momentum shift opportunity there for Fuquay Verena uh, punching that one in. That will put the uh, play back into the hands of the defense here. And uh, the defense, not a stellar first half, but this is not a defense that has um, has really been successful uh, with the pass. They've struggled with the pass, and, and that's not just tonight. That's uh, all season and in, in years past as well. well. You're looking at a really good quarterback, and you're looking at a lot of speed on that side of the ball. This will be uh, low kick that bounces up and will be returned. Middle Creek trying to make some noise and trying to take those six right back. Tripped up at the end. Great tackle there by Connor Rosenblum. But that will, uh, man, turn this game right back on its head here. As Actually, I believe that was Jackson Barker. Jackson Barker makes the tackle and it is a touchdown saving tackle. That is killer. It's kind of a no-man's land kind of kick. If you're going to onside kick it, onside kick it. If you're going to kick it deep, kick it deep. Yeah. Kick it out of bounds. My, my thing is, and we've said this for five years, kick it out of bounds. Just give them the field position. Don't let them have a chance to do something like that. So now with a very short field, Sean Brown, why is the white hat calling for the uh, – clock to run. I think he was confused as Brown will tuck it and take it most of the way himself, all the way himself and uh, almost down to the goal line. He gets it down to the three yard line where it will be first and goal. But don't know if you could see it. Uh, the white hat was calling for the uh, clock to be wound right after the kickoff. It's cold out there. Not how that <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Acting like it's a 40 point game here. First down and goal from the three. Shotgun snap, handoff to the right-hand side. A host of Bengals there to make the tackle. No, he stays on his feet, gets it down to the one-yard line. Forward progress, you would think. They've called some early whistles here tonight uh, in the first half. They were not blowing that one dead uh, for that play and uh, very surprised to see the differences, that. It differences in that as Prinovo Gets the uh, call and carries it down to the one-yard line. Second down and goal from the one. Yeah. 
Big opportunity here for the Bengals if they could make a stand. I mean, you've you got to do everything you can for this one. That certainly doesn't help. And you're, what you're about to see is the reason you don't chase that point. Middle Creek's about to go up 21-12. You kick that PAT, you're 21-13, you're one possession down. By, by going for the two and failing, you're, you're, gonna, you're getting ready to be at a two-score uh, two deficit. The only reason I would fight that is because of what we have seen for the kicking game for Fuquay the last couple weeks. They have, that has not been a sure thing. And it, it was almost a point as it's a fumble. And he still doesn't have it, it looks like. Does Fuquay have it? Do they get it back? On the goal line, they do. Huge turnover here. And the Bengals come up big with it. Unbelievable. Sean Brown fumbling. And it looked like a little bit of confusion with his running back as well. Brown fumbles inside the five, and the Bengals take over at their own three. I remember a Fuquay drive from a couple of years ago starting at about the three-yard line. Against Middle Creek? Against Middle Creek. Do it you started that? at the half-yard line. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember that one very clearly, yes. That one will be uh, burned into my mind forever. And it was a Braswell then as well that had the helm at quarterback. This time a tackle will be made <laughs> about the one, if not shorter than that. So right back to that half I'm yard line. You gotta go jumbo and just get some get some space. Connor Sheparel had the carry. And again a loss of uh, two, maybe even three there. Bring up second down and thirteen with seven oh two to play third quarter. Certainly cannot Give up the two points here. Got to get out of your own end zone. Man in motion. This will be a fake toss. Braswell's going to throw in the air. Gutsy Gets it complete. Call. Gutsy call there by Jeff Hall. Let wow. the quarterback drop back into the end zone and make that pass. That took some guts and is exactly what they needed there. And on a night that... We've been talking about it. He's been doing nothing but rolling out left, rolling out right, waggle passes, hasn't been standing in the pocket, and that time he did. That was a huge call and a huge execution by Braswell, who has grown from the junior to more than that here at the end of the season. We talked about it last week during the Garner game, uh, the maturity that we've seen him be able to uh, – grow into this season. Great pass, first down for the Bengals. Rolls out to the right. This will be Good a pitch. pitch to Lions. No, to Barker, excuse me. Barker gets it up to the 34 yard line, right up to the 35 they're gonna say. And that will be close to a first down. Nice decision. Second down and short here, very short. Great read option there. That time out of the shotgun. That was very close. You got to be careful with your substitutions there. Coming out of the huddle with a tw with your 12th man rolling out uh, off the field, and now we've got a flag on Middle Creek side. There was no movement on the Mustangs. It's a sideline warning against the Mustangs. They have had some trouble over there tonight. Yeah, thugs. They're thugs and stooges. Well, Nick, that was probably just better getting too Remind me to never borrow a scarf from one Richard Northam the <laughs> third. Drowning over here, man. Drowning. <laughs> I've got it, man. You take care of you. That's not how you're supposed to use that. But. There you go. <laughs> Been here all year. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and inches coming up here. The line to gain is right on that 35. Braswell under center with a tight trips to left hand side. Toss sweep. Lions looking for the block. He gets it. Spins. Gets the first down and continues up to the 40 yard line, where it will be first down and 10. You know, I remember a time when it was about 98 degrees in this press box and there wasn't anybody here. Nobody. <laughs> Yep, 
It was a uh, well, little nip in the air. They turned on a little electric heater in the back, and all of a sudden it's standing room only. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are looking at 14 to 12. If you tuned away for the last couple minutes, it was a turnover down on the goal line by the Liberty bound quarterback Brown. Now the counter, I think the first time we've seen the counter tonight, maybe the second. Liberty bound. Yeah. Jerry Falwell, you, I hear you. Go to the mountains. That'll be a carry for half a yard. We'll uh, consider it a full yard there. Second down and nine coming up. But Brown fumbled, uh, really got up to about his own, or the uh, Bengals won, fumbled it, and the Bengals got it back after completing the onside kick to start off this half. Ooh, nice ooh, pitch, ooh. blind to Barker. He takes it up the right-hand side, gets Good a block job. by Ethan Burke, gets undercut at the end of that play, and an excellent run. Barker had nothing going in the first half. He has turned up the heat here in the second. He's gotten the blocks going for him. Nice late pitch again by Jacob Braswell. Timeout, Middle Creek. Middle Creek is not liking what they're seeing. They will call their first timeout of the second half. And Fuquay Arena right now is rolling here, Coach. So I was a little distracted during the halftime. What was our uh, college game of the week? LSU Alabama. Okay. I, I was a little disappointed. I felt like uh, if Appalachia could have pulled it off last week, I felt like game day was probably going to be in Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, don't know about that, but... Uh, Coming to your city, Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina. Hey, if they're going to go to the South Dakota or whatever it was, for real. South one double-A game. The <laughs> armpit of the Carolinas. Oh, Columbia? Yeah. Yes. It's yes, one, indeed. It's one step above Greenville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You ever Wait, been? which one? North, right? It's, yeah, yeah. yeah Greenville, okay, North okay. Carolina is right. horrible. Greenville, yeah. South Carolina is beautiful. Right, right. Greenville, North, I, North Carolina. I was Carolina? confused. Not, Not so, much. so much. Yeah, I'm going there again in April. Yeah, I'm sorry. For a work trip and. Uh, Lock your doors. <laughs> I'm glad that there's a lot to do uh, while I'm there. Bengals looking at first down and 10. Don't let him grab your booty. <laughs> Lions goes in motion. He's going to be the pitch man again. He will get the pitch. Not good space there. But this time it will go for a loss of two, maybe three. I think Braswell got a little bit deep, and that kind of messed up the spacing. And, and the penetration of Middle Creek really pushed that whole play back quite a bit. Yeah. And it will be a loss of at least three. Second down and 13. And the Middle Creek sideline getting loud now. You can hear them. The Creek Crazies, I think they're called. They're out in uh, big numbers here tonight. You call them Creek Crazy. I call them Thugs and Stooges. <laughs> and off. Sakiti Uzandu. Nice. Come on. Big carry tonight. Uzandu having a big night tonight. Nice carry right up the gut. Down to the 20-yard line. He has been knocked down and dragged down and... Uh, that's his biggest of the night. He's gotten the play call a lot, and I love to see you going back to him, giving him the chance, and he gets the first down. Bengals in the red zone. Handoff up the middle. Zandu pushed back after a gain of one. That's a great offensive line push there as Middle Creek was all over it. And now another flag coming in. And I think that will be half the distance to the goal because just from where the line judge was coming from and the angles that he had on different players, I'm not sure that would have been on Fuqua Arena. Let's see. Yeah. I like the field mic tonight. Had it all season. This is the first time we've really been able to pick it up. Uh, this is a thin air. That's right. That's right. Easy the, uh, to travel the, through. The noise waves travel through the cool, thin air a little <laughs> bit better than that. That's right. Warm, humid stuff when the press box was empty. I got to say, uh, last year, going back to last year's game, there were game penalties that changed that game a lot. Uh, offsides, um, ineligible man downfield, that sort of thing that really killed Fuquay. 
tonight, Middle Creek is going to beat itself up if this turns into a Fuquay Verena game for Penal a victory penalties and turnovers. by penalties. Turnovers too, three, absolutely. Three, what is that, three 15 yarders? Yeah. Three 15 yarders. They gave up an onside kick. They had a big, t whew, huge turnover there yeah. at the end zone. And look, 92 yards later, here we are knocking on the door. That will be an automatic first down at the 10 yard line. First down and goal. White Hat went to the sideline of Middle Creek. Bengals shift. We met to the right tight end. Bengals come set. Lions goes in motion. Gets the handoff. Takes it to the left side. Cuts up the middle. Gets it inside the 10 and inside the 5. Nice run again. Looked very similar to his touchdown run he had. It really is nice action on that. It's, it's a little counter action, really nice seam is created over there on the left side of the line, just off tackle. It was a 24-yard touchdown run in the first half that looked very similar to that one. Nice run by Lyons as he eclipses the century mark here tonight. Handoff to the right-hand side, Connor Chaparral. Rolls forward. Sorry, thank you. Sakiti Uzandu with the carry. He chips away at a couple more yards. Ball at the one yard line. Let's say the two. Third down and goal from the two. Big third down here for Fuquay. You know they're going for it on fourth down. Got Sheffrall coming in for Uzandu. Why like, would you I assume like that we're not going to score on this down, Mr. Northam? No assumptions. Bengals come set. Barker in motion. Handoff. Chaparral. Bengals take the lead. Yes, that's right. As one gracious viewer mentioned to us last week, that was the first time that the Bengals have retaken the lead last week against Garner. So two weeks in a row, the Bengals do so, and do so with an 18 to 14 lead right now, PAT pending, and it looks like they're gonna go for two again. So it didn't quite finish that comment as Middle Creek interrupted with a turnover, but uh, we were talking about chasing points. I think this is, I really do believe this is less about chasing points right now than the PAT just failing, and you might as well try to go for something. Well, at this here. point, you have to go for the two. The previous score. Braswell keeps so. it. He rolls out to his left. He's going to try to dive. Spins around. He kicks the pylon. Yes! In for the two-point conversion. 20-14. to 14, A six-point lead for the Bengals with 2.09 to play in the third quarter. Okay, you're not going to like to hear this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. If we kick the PAT on the last score, we've got a seven-point lead. As it is, Middle Creek with a score and a kick. You know, it's, that's, that's where you get into trouble chasing points you don't need to chase. And, and I, I absolutely do. Uh, I hear you. I believe you. I but know you what disagree. you're saying. It's but all right. You're allowed to be wrong. I, on <laughs> I only do because of the trouble that uh, Fuquay has had with PATs in the last couple weeks. Go ahead, Luke. So, so a kid misses a free throw, you don't let him shoot anymore? you got to keep plugging away, man. He's your kicker. Let him kick. Fair point. I got gotcha. you. Go ahead, Luke. Thank you. When buying a home, you want someone to help you who has ethics and integrity and who will go the extra mile to make sure you get everything you desire in your new home. Krista Absher and her team at the Absher Realty Group will help you find your perfect home. Don't hesitate to call her today. Our presenting sponsor and a premier Bingo Booster Club sponsor, the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Bengals set to kick things off with the lead right now. 20 to 14, 209 to play, third quarter. And now the momentum, the energy, certainly on the side of the Bengals. As Jones will pop this one up right into the center part of the field, and this one will be returned. And a big return coming again. Not as big this time. I'm the the opening kickoffs were really working quite well for the Bengals, kicking it down 30, 25 yard line, what they've been doing most of the season. 
And so I'm surprised with the last couple kicks. I get the onside kick, obviously. But then following that up with the squib kick and then that pooch kick right into the middle there, I'm just kind of surprised by that. Kick it out <laughs> of bounds. <laughs> Either that, or if you're going to do that kind of kick, kick I mean, it just do an onside out kick. Out of bounds. Do an onside kick. Well, it's the equivalent. Right, right, Same exactly. Position. That's a great point. Hand off up the middle. And getting into the uh, second level there is I wa Cole I watched, I watched the high school two points short of a state championship. Every kickoff, every punt, all year, out of bounds. I believe in the philosophy for high school football. That last drive for the Bengals, 12 plays, 96 yards. Connor Sheparel punching it in from the two-yard line. Brown through the air, right over the middle. Nice tackle, nice hit in the middle on the completion. I'm going to need you to take about two steps backwards. You're making me look like a midget. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll, we'll show you something. A little that person, on I apologize. A little person. <laughs> little My apologies. <laughs> Nice pass and completion over the middle. Brown set to uh, see this first down shotgun snap come his way again. This will be a handoff that goes on the end around to the right-hand side as Tate Jones takes it for another first down. So quickly marching down the field on this short field that they were given. Clock stops with a minute 23 on the third quarter clock. Brown sends Jones in motion again. Fake handoff to Jones, then Prenevo gets it and trips up a little bit. Then the tackle made by Joe Carlin in the middle for a short gain, actually. A uh, little bit of a loss, it looks like. Looks like a good number of substitutions coming in and out for the uh, Bengal defense right now, trying to keep the fresh legs. Brown passes to the left-hand side, bobbled by Jones. That nice hit. And the ball comes out again. Oh, no, they're going to say it's incomplete. I don't know about that. As Fuquay Verena came up with it. Don't do that. Mm. Wow. There you go. Just shake hands and go back to your huddles. <laughs> that was nearly backbreaking. I saw a catch in two steps. Oh, <laughs> That's what I saw from He bobbled there. it for a while, but uh, I it saw it on Sportsman like on Fuquay. <laughs> we, we dodged a bullet right there. Well, uh... Third down and 11 now. 20 to 14, Fuquay Verena. 52.4, third quarter. Brown, whistle now, and a timeout's going to be called by the Bengals. As I believe, is that the second one that Fuquay has taken? I don't know, what's your stat man say? Uh, I thought it was the first. I know Middle Creek has taken one. I believe both have just taken one. That's what the scoreboard says, and that's what we'll go with as this is a big third down here for uh, Middle Creek. Certainly wanting to convert this. They can get the first down without getting the touchdown. Fuquay Verena seeing third down at 11 on the defensive side now, hoping for a big stop here. Boy, going back to that uh, ruled incomplete pass, that could have uh, been huge. I, I think you're right. Fuquay has done a great job all night of keeping their head on their shoulders and not allowing penalties to hurt them the way that Middle Creek has. And they've got to continue to do that for the uh, remaining 12 minutes, 51 seconds of this game. Brown looking to pass, pressure in the backfield again. Pass over the middle, that is going to be ruled for the first time tonight. No, it's gonna be a touchdown as that pass is complete. It would have been pass interference, but a touchdown it will be ruled, most likely. And, and that's where we went back and talked about that in the first half. You've gotta keep contained. We allowed the quarterback to escape. Just a little slide to his left, but that's what opened up that passing lane. White Hat double checking that they will want to decline. Really? So they can accept the penalty and put it on the kickoff. I, I don't understand why that 
can be a rule or why, if that is a rule, why you would need uh, – any other time that would be a decline penalty just because it's on a touchdown as the snap is bobbled. They're going to look to pass it. Just get the tackle here. You get your point back. Tie ball game at 20. Brought down by the ambush. The ambush of Bengals. Thank you very much, Nate. Nate, you're Luke. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> That's a big one there, Coach. Again, it came down to the snap. Just a low snap there that uh, the holder was not able to uh, do anything with. Champion White was uh, hey, you know what? Trying. If we had kicked that PT, PAT two <laughs> two scores ago, we'd still be, be in the lead. One. We'd yep. still be in the lead right yep. now. I got you. Just gonna throw that out there. I got you. Well, um, Evan, if you wouldn't mind taking a look at the score from uh, Apex right now, wondering what uh, that uh, fight one? for second the, place. The Apex, Gar the, uh, Apex South. <laughs> <laughs> the Apex Friendship Garner game, I think, is. Is the one we're really looking for here. It's still saying 14 zip of the half. I'm gonna check their Twitter page. Okay. Um, I will say so. Does Middle Creek at this point attempt an onside kick? No. I think because of the penalty, I think it's a. Now hold on. How is it a 15 yard penalty? Because that's what a pass interference is. Is it really? It yeah. really is. I don't. I still don't. I didn't. It might be a high school rule that you can add it on to the kickoff. Pretty sure we're playing high school football here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, I think Hans' team's got to be smart. Yeah, they're just going to boot this into the end See, zone. See, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's if a brilliant. Gonna, if you're going to get all that yardage, why don't you kick one high and just short of the end zone and try to tackle them inside the 10? That or, again, I mean, kick an middle, onside middle, kick at middle, that point. Or, the, or that. And you're middle not going to lose that yardage. Yeah, Middle Creek can kick it out of the end zone anytime they want. Right. Why take all that 15 yards and then do that? Yep. Well, uh, I will say, though, I think that is the dumbest rule to be able to, on a touchdown, continue to accept the penalty and continue it onto the kickoff. I, that's just I, I don't idiotic. disagree with that. Don't disagree with you at all. I appreciate it. Well, again, it didn't really do much harm for the Bengals, thankfully, as they will take it from their own 20 with the game tied at 20. And it is Connor Chaparral with the first carry of the series. And the last play of the third quarter. Quite possibly, that is correct. A four-yard gain for Chaparral. Uh, Neil Eichhorn was up here, and still is up here, as is the rest of most half the Bengal fans. Uh, he was telling me there's actually a, uh, a group that puts together Can't spreads. They're going to snap the ball. Puts together spreads on high school games, every high school game in North Carolina. We'll tell you more about that here in just a second. Maybe trying to draw Middle Creek off. Four seconds left on the clock. Got and it. he does just got in it. time. <laughs> jumped off sides. you got to be yeah. kidding me. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, trying to anticipate by way of the clock, but that is a, a dumb way to do it. What a Mustang. <laughs> so, do you – is there one – Should there not be a free play there? Time down? I believe there would be. Maybe it's just the end of the game. We'll see what they say. See what the – yeah, the officials are going to – I think they're I trying think to figure it out. wave them back on. Okay. Middle Creek defense is coming back. Yeah, on the it would field. appear they're going to have one untimed down at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, I say we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see if we could pick up uh, the referee on his announcement again, but it will be second down. One second and on the clock. One, that's a long one. There it is. That's the quarter. And one second on the third quarter he clock. He wound it. He's winding it. <laughs> that was okay fourth quarter coming your way next 20 to 20 Fuquay Arena and Middle Creek right here on the Bengal R3 Sports Network pointless ex
Getting the most for your home or property means doing more than putting a for sale sign out front. In a competitive market where new homes for sale are added daily, your listing needs to be seen in a variety of places in order to stand out. To ensure your home gets noticed and sells without a hitch for full market value, consider working with a top professional at the Absure Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty. Krista and her team will put together a strategic pricing and marketing plan to get your home sold quickly. Visit theabsurerealtygroup.com today. Oh my gosh, I'm stuffed. I told you not to eat so much. I couldn't help it. That sweet and tangy hickory aviator sauce dripping off those wings. Yeah, well you sure took a big bite out of my pulled pork sandwich too. Oh, and the fries with ranch. Blue cheese. Whew, you're gonna have to roll me out of here. You know, I could have a couple onion rings. I could eat. Honey, you can always eat. Aviator Smokehouse. Online at aviatorbrew.com slash smokehouse. Twelve minutes up on the fourth quarter clock. Fuquay Verena has second down and a long one here. As we flip ends of the field. And this will be a handoff. Sheparel flag coming in. It looks like it's going to be in the area of holding maybe or an illegal procedure against Fuquay. That was awful quick to have been a hold. Yeah. It would appear the microphone might not be working for the white hat anymore. I'm from America. The toboggan's a sled. Ball start on the offense. We'll back him up five yards. Okay. And if he's going to call false start, I, I get a legal ball. procedure, but yeah, yeah a, a false ball. start would be. A dead ball. At first, I thought it was a defensive offside the way he threw it. But. <coughs> That'll bring up second down and six. <coughs> Guy in front of us. Hand off. <laughs> Hand off up the middle. What was that? Oh, I was uh, commenting on his toboggan. Okay, here's the deal, though. <coughs> Nobody in this building, nor anybody in the stands, is sitting there with a sled on their head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Let's keep it civil here. Third down and four coming up with 11 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Toke. This will be a big third down here. If you Verena needing to convert on this, keep the momentum going in their way, in their favor, as Lyons gets the end around call, gets close to the first down, not even close, he gets it. First down for the Bengals, big carry for Matthew Lyons as he continues his very successful night here tonight. Knit cap or beanie, but it is not a toe bargain. I'll compromise with beanie. We can take beanie. You want to be proper toke. Plus, toke's a fun word to say. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Bengals. Man in motion is Barker. This will be a handoff to Sheparel. Sheparel getting a little burst of speed there as he had the blockers set up. Big gain there of seven, second down and three. It's a long three coming up. The line to gain is about the 41, right on the 41, actually. Man in motion from the right wing. That's Lions again. Braswell keeps it on the fake handoff and gets met by two Mustangs and then driven back. Tackle made by Ryan Swaggart and Braden Harrison. Make sure to follow along with us. Live stats presented to you by Creative Wiring Solutions. We appreciate their sponsorship of the live stats here this season. 
We'll give you an update of those here in just a little bit as Sheparel carries ahead for another first down as he lowers his shoulder, uses his blockers, and the Bengals move the chains again. Boy, a long, sustained drive would be great here for Fuquay Arena to just chip away at this clock. They have done well with that tonight multiple times. Again, that last drive was 96 yards on 12 plays. First down and 10, still in Bengal territory here. Twins receivers to the right, one out to the left as Braswell loses his footing there for a moment but stays on his feet, carries ahead for five yards up to the 47 yard line. This offense looks so efficient tonight and this is, I mean, limited possessions, long drives, eating up clock. You think they can chip away all nine minutes here? I do not, but I think taking off a chunk is going to be helpful. And really, you're setting yourself up for a for a to leave the season with a positive feeling, and really an incentive to do the work in the off season that you need to do. Braswell gets taken down after a loss of two, maybe three. Hey, and, but that's a smart play. Yeah, smart play to just go ahead and eat that. You know, he, he took a bad situation, could have made it a lot worse. You know, obviously not what you wanted, but if he had tried to pitch that, all kind of bad things could have happened. And Evan, you talked about it last week, that that was a play that he probably would have forced the pitch or done something else in the first couple games of the yeah, season. he's definitely grown up a lot over the season for sure. Third down, and it's a big one here for Fuqua Arena. Third down and eight. Under eight minutes to play in this contest in regulation. Tied at 20 apiece. And around again for Lions. He cuts it up on the wide side of the field. Gets it close Pretty to close. the first down. The mark will be at about the 48. Why are you winding the clock as it was a tackle out of bounds? Because it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold. Very, very close at the 48. I think, think those chains travel the whole field. Yeah, I believe so. They are going to pause for a measurement here. And I I think he's got it. I think he did too. Coach? We'll, we'll see in just a minute. The ball never lies. The pen, that, that chain is going to tra travel a long way left to right as it traverses the field. That would be 50 yards. Okay. Just Fourth down. Sure. Oh, man. Just a yard. Just as we had surmised. So, uh, kind of surprised here. I'm not questioning uh, any entry for sure, but Matthew Lyons just now at the century mark. So, great to see that. He's only got 79 yards to go for that uh, 1,000 yards on the season. Did you say that again? <laughs> 79 yards to go to get 1,000 this year. That would be some work. That would Doable. Be. Doable, yes. Plausible, but unlikely. So about half a yard maybe. What's the call here, Coach? I'm, I'm quarterback sneaking it. If that's up to me. Fourth down, half a yard. Big play here, 20 point, uh, 20 to 20 game with more than seven and a half to go. Oh, Braswell, on. That's, uh, hands off. Connor Sheparel gets it and gets the first down. <laughs> Offensive line doing their work for that one. And the Bengals have a fresh set of downs. I mean, Middle Creek set up so far off the ball. Uh, that was the thing that struck me as I'm watching why I even really didn't even need to hand it off. So because Fuquay has been so successful going outside with the toss sweeps all night, are they playing safe in that sense and not I stacking can't the ball, that stacking question. the box? Even look, here, look even here, they're, they're lining up a yard off. Yeah. Three for four on the night on fourth down of the Bengals as Braswell keeps it, late pitch, has some room. Jackson Barker gets a block downfield and runs it out of bounds just outside the 20-yard line. Big run by Jackson Barker. It's just bizarre to me. What, I'm not sure what Middle Creek is doing. There's nobody on that pitch man out there. 
they've had and you, I mean they they knew what to expect. They've seen it for years. And all night. If you haven't been paying attention for years, definitely all night. First down and 10 at the 24 yard line. Clock continues to roll now. Stopped, sorry, at seven minutes and will roll on the snap. Tight trips to the left. Toss sweep to Matthew Lyons. He will lower his shoulder and get a couple yards as he brings it up to the 22, maybe the 23. Second down and eight coming after a two yard game for Lions. Pair of wing backs, Parker on the left, Lions on the right. One split out to the wide right. And this will be a couple fakes for Braswell. He'll pitch Ooh. to Barker, and that was. <laughs> well, we talked about it earlier. You got, you've got to keep your spacing there. Yeah. Braswell got pushed back too far. May as well just eat that one. And I'm, I'm sorry to, sorry to laugh at that one, and especially now that Barker is uh, hurt. But that almost looked like a, you know what? You take these tackles because uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit this one out. But. Uh, Really do hate to see that Jackson Barker is down. He has had an excellent night tonight. It's kind, of, kind of a bad read there. Should have, probably yeah. should have just given it to the dive back. And uh, it's easy, easy to say that from up here now <laughs> after the play's ended. But Jackson Barker before that carries six carries for 45 yards. He's got one reception for a yard as well. It has seemed like uh, an even better night than that for him. He had a slow start to it. But here in the second half, he has really gotten some good and crucial carries. Uh, that one, unfortunately, uh, looks like it's going to take some time for him to get up. And uh, that hopefully does not complete his night tonight. Again, Jackson Barker, a sophomore. We're going to see him for uh, he's hustling off the field. That's great to see. But uh, strong future ahead for that young man. Big, strong and I look forward to see what he uh, has in store for the next two years and your sweet spot next year, Coach, the junior season. It's the best year you get out of a kid. You can't trust seniors. They get big heads, think they know everything, don't want to work as hard, Evan, take the product out of their hair, just don't do what they need to do. Evan's a junior. Oh, is he only a junior? <laughs> <laughs> I knew the first word I knew you said. I, liked, you were <laughs> I knew I liked that guy. <laughs> Third down and 13. I remembered his name. How about that? That was pretty good. That's, that's on point. Going back to the air are the Bengals rolling oh. out to the left-hand side. Wide Got open. It. Got it. It's a oh. touchdown. <laughs> that is perfectly Coming reminiscent. Back. Coming back, boys. Oh, no. I thought we had a little block in the back back there. It, I don't see any laundry, though. I do not, but I did see a signal. No way. Yeah, I was surprised we got away with it. I was, oh, there it is. Okay, he's literally standing on it. So, oh, man, killer. Pretty, pretty obvious. As much as I'd like to blame referees whenever I can. Evan, did that remind you of anything, that play right there? The pass or the penalty? The, the pass. <laughs> oh, yeah, last week. Last week. I mean, just like it, we had a uh, mirror image of that play. Let's do it again. Oh, man. Hey. Blo blocked somebody in the back last week, too? No, no, no. It was for a touchdown. It stood. It was great. How many problem, yards is the that? problem with the situation now is Oof. we're going the wrong direction. At yeah. least now we have room to punt. <laughs> we don't want that. Get back down there, get this first down, keep the clock rolling. Well, I, I didn't want fourth and 12 from the 30. That is not what I wanted. No, that's that's true. I don't want third and 33. 32, 33. You got 33? Doesn't matter. <laughs> the computer's still calculating. Got it. Got bring the supercomputer in. All right, third down and 30 plus. Just look through a deep shot or you want to go conservative? What? And a whistle and a stoppage. Oh my God! 
delay of game against Fuquay will back it up five more yards. If it was important in the first half when the Bengals got down, it is even more important now. Okay, this is what These I would, two penalties do not matter, and you've got to just keep this moving This is what forward. I would do. I would put trips out there and drop back and just throw it as high and as far as you can. On third and down? Yes, I would. You got one-on-one -on -one coverage on your side. Oh, and even more lost there. Wow. This just went from bad to worse for this series. Hey, but he had forward progress. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would have uh, just thrown that thing as far as I could on third down. Well, and he might have had he had the opportunity. All right, so. Maybe even quick kick. I might have even done a quick kick on third down. If, if I could state it again, nothing lost in these last three plays, except yards, but. The defense has got to come up big. They've done so already tonight. As Lions will punt this one away. Punts it off the side of his foot. Probably the worst punt that he's had all season. Man, hate that for him. And the punt will go out of bounds at the 38-yard line where the defense will have some work to do. With 4.31 to play, fourth quarter. Two timeouts for both teams. 20-20 to -20 the score. Postseason for Middle Creek on the line here. And for Fuquay Verena, nothing but bragging rights. First down and 10 for Sean Brown and the Middle Creek Mustangs. I'm going to tell you, I think there's a little bit more than bragging rights. Let me ask you this when was the last time we broadcast a Fuquay victory over Middle Creek? Well, never. Okay, so it's not just bragging rights. Sure. You got to get that monkey off your back. That's right. And this is as good a season as any to do it. Yeah, you darn right. How, how many times have we seen a Fuquay team that was just on the cusp of greatness, All right? And let a Middle Creek loss ruin its season. Get the win this year. That takes the pressure off of you next year when we're back on top of things. We're going out on our own terms. Pass to the right hand side. Staying on his feet and ended on the right. Nice tackle there at the end. And Coach um, Coach Hall made this point, and he made it in uh, in his comments on the broadcast. There are not many teams that can continue a winning streak into the next season, except state champions and teams in this situation. Bengals can go into next year with a win here with a one-game winning streak. That's something to build on. Hand off. No. He stays on his feet and carries it up to the 49-yard line. The clock will stop. The chains will reset with 3.49 to play in the fourth. One game, or excuse me, one play at a time. Wipe everything off in this series to this point. One play at a time. Clock is rolling. Man in motion from right to left. Fakes it to him. Prenovo gets the carry, takes it up the middle for a gain of about three, maybe four, as he carries it up to the 45. Clock will tick under 3.15 now. He said the thing. <laughs> No, sir, he said ambush of Bengals. Yeah, he said the thing. No? <laughs> Didn't say the thing. He said ambush of Bengals. Did you, what were you, you biology? Were you, you animal science? Did you do some studying this week or what? Well, no, it was Googled a Googled it when we were in the marathon of a game of South Garner. Pass incomplete as it was thrown behind Tate Jones. He's actually had a tough time a couple times tonight dropping the passes. It's a good productive use of your time. I'm proud of you, Luke. Nice job. I mean, we had plenty of time to waste there. That's for sure. Whew, that, was a, shake thing. that was a game. And what's the other? Uh, on offense, it would be a streak. A streak of Bengals. Low snap, but uh, recovered there fine. Nice! Something! Yes! Yes! Ethan Burke! Trying to return it, gets it up to midfield. He's still on his feet, still going. Go, yes, go, flag. Oh, 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 oh. 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 20 yards.
yards behind the play, there's a flag. I'm not sure that's on us, but the flag is out there. Flag back at the 35 yard line. I'm Bengals not positive that's on us though. Get the interception, huge interception. I'm not positive it's coming back. Speaking of streaks. Man, Ethan Burke with a huge, biggest interception. Clipping against Fuquay Verena will bring it back. So far behind the play. Oh. 2.33 on the fourth quarter clock. Interception will stand. The Bengals will keep the ball. Now the, and the, they will the, get the ball the at good, about the midfield. Thing, and that, the good thing about that is the time that's going to come off the that's clock. That's right. We score there, Middle Creek gets the ball back. Right, exactly. This way it is, we can, we can burn some more clock and march down the field, get into field goal position, and boop, one through for the win. Ball will really be placed at the 50-yard line. It's about 50 yards farther than where it should be. <laughs> 20 to 20. Let's reset the game for you. 2.33 to play. Fourth quarter. Fuquay Verena with the ball. Both teams with two timeouts. Turnovers and penalties. The name of the game tonight. That is the 11th interception for Sean Brown on the season. Gonna be kicking into just a light breeze. Mm. Light breeze. Lions goes in motion. Connor Sheparel carries it, rolls ahead, and gets close to the first down. He carries it for nine. Up to the 41. Clock continues to roll. So what do you think we need to do? Get down to about the 15 yard line? <sighs> 10. Can you okay. imagine? <laughs> I'm going to say the 15. Can you imagine if Matt Jones was able to kick this? Oh, to BMC, win it? man. Big man on campus for months. Oh, my goodness. Keeper by Braswell fakes it, pitches to Lions. Very risky. Gets the first down. And the, co the uh, conversion got, he did get it, didn't he? up to the 38. Plenty. And now oh, a flag, flag coming on the sideline of Middle Creek. That's not bad. That, if that this is another one for 15 yards. Nope, this flag came way late. It came after the play. And I believe this is going to add 15 to the end of this run. The conversion was up to the 38. There is a lot of discussion going on by the officials. Still talking about it. Whew. It was thrown on the middle creek side of the line. See what he says. That is the second sideline uh, penalty. So that one will be enforced an extra five yards against Middle Creek after the end of the run. I don't think I have ever seen that actually enforced. Just because usually you see the sideline warning and then that's it and it was a mistake and whatever. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. A lot of tension, a lot of pressure over there on the middle break. Ooh. How many timeouts are we have left? Two. Two timeouts? Two timeouts. First down and ten, the clock will roll. Need about 15 yards, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Trips receivers to the right. Lions gets the carry, takes it up to the 40. It's sorry, about, the 30. It's all about ball security here. Ball security, get the ball up to the 15, move it to the middle of the yard, and psh, boot it through for three. I will remind you, five seasons ago, in the middle of the season, Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek, it was a kick at the end of the game that could have won it. And in fact, it went into overtime. I've got a good feeling about this. That would be revenge 
unlike any other. Carey, Chaparral, past the 25, close to the first down marker. Tick, Clock tick, tick, under tick, tick, 60 tick, seconds. Tick, 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 tick. Third down and a long one. Ball control above all else. Critical here. Chaparral in the backfield. Lions in motion. Goes to the left-hand side. Chaparral gets the first down. Clock stops with 36.6 on the fourth quarter. A few plays found a side of the line they like. Definitely, uh, definitely favoring the left side of the offensive line. And no, a timeout will be called. One timeout left for Fuquay Verena as they take the timeout. The chains do move. Ball on the 21 yard line. Six yards to get in the kicker's range. There has been one field goal attempted all season long and it was missed. Okay. Just stating facts. Inside the 10. Second time's the yeah. charm. That's what inside I'm the 10 at. makes me feel a little better. I like 15, inside the 10. 15 doesn't make me feel great. 15. A little 32 yards. 32 yarder. Plink. There's no win. Look at the flags are flags are dead on that end of the field. Yeah. You're good to go. All right. Just boop. Take a shot to the end zone. Nay, nay, say I. Let's run that ball up to the middle of the field. Like that's the same guy who said, "Hey, we got to score, score quick." <laughs> no, nope. pretty sure you want to run all the clock out and get the last score if you can. First down and ten for the Bengals. Man in motion is Lions. He gets the screen pass to the right side, incomplete. <laughs> all right. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Awfully close to a lateral there. I don't know why we would not pick the ball up, just to be sure. Pick the ball up. Well, sure. Pick the ball he up. He had the whistle. Pick the ball up. I, I hear you, but pick he had the, the whistle. Up. Okay, pick the ball up. <laughs> be a nice guy. Pick the ball up. Real glad you've joined us for this one. Fuquay, Verena, and Middle Creek knotted up at 20 apiece. 33.9 left to play. Fourth quarter. Season finale for the Bengals. Trying to make it the season finale for the Middle Creek Mustangs as well. Staying on his feet is Matthew Lyons. And he is carried back to the 25 yard line where Fuquay Verena will take its third and final timeout of this second half. Third down and 13, 24.6 to play fourth quarter. It's gonna make it awful tough to get the kicking team out there. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what you're laughing at. We don't have any timeouts. How are we gonna get the kicking team out there? <laughs> Let's see. Where, where's old Matt? Has he got his helmet on? Matt's warming up with He's the warming net up down there. there. Okay. Well, don't take a couple net. more boots. Keep your don't keep your lid net. on, and be ready to run out there. Look at him. He's ready to roll. Yeah. I'm telling you, I wish we would have gotten about six more yards. I, I, I actually agree with you. I think if they don't, if they uh, throw well, the complete pass here, they might attempt. It. Sure. And yeah. I yeah. Mean, and actually, you're right. That's the situation we're in now. Now we have to throw the ball. Got to throw it. Either Gotta go throw toward it. the sideline, yeah. incomplete, something like that. Yep. Don't have a timeout left. Yep. <sighs> Do y'all remember how long that field goal was? Oh, uh, five years back. Oh man, I sure don't. Oh yeah, go ahead and give us that. Thank you, Luke. For most of us, our home is our biggest investment. When it's Astra. time to sell, get the value you deserve with the help of a professional realtor. Chris Astro and her team at the Astro Realty Group are help standing by to help you get the highest value for your home. Don't hesitate. Visit the Astro Realty Group .com and tell them you want Team Astro on your side. Third down and 13, handoff. Connor Chaparral to the right side, to the middle part of the field. Carries forward, now he's got to run it on. Matt run Jones running onto the field. Braswell telling everybody to get off. Down to 14. Uh, we got plenty of time. Dylan Smith is the holder. He sets down. Where's the ball at, Chief? Six seconds at the 26. 36-yard kick. The hold is down, and it's blocked. Got to get to him. Got to get to him and bring him down. That's the end of regulation. Fuquay Verena and Middle Creek going to overtime. What's new? <laughs> All right. We were right there, man. Man. Snap was a little bit high. Snap was a little bit high. Hands got a little bit tight on the holder. All right. Overtime. Not going to pretend to overtime. understand what the overtime rules are, but both teams will probably have the ball, and we'll go for it. Ball goes at on the, the 10. 10. Everybody at the 10-yard line. Everybody. 
What do you think of the new college rule with the automatic go for two after four? I want to say it's five. After five? What do you think? Uh, what do I care? Yeah. UNC fans care. After three now? Yeah, they moved it up. Is that right? After three? I don't know. Yeah. I, it's, anyway. God. Yes. Fuquay Verena, you just wanted to be right more I than really else. I really did. <laughs> There's nothing I like more than not being wrong. Yes. I don't think we've been into overtime the entire time I've worked here. That is correct. We haven't beaten them. You long have long not. Years. I've always stared at those little buttons down there wondering what they do. Uh, well, <laughs> you will now get to um, entertain that notion. I believe there will be a coin toss involved here. There will be no, <laughs> no time up on the clock, and the Bengal, uh, the uh, team to get the uh, team to get the ball will get it on the ten yard line, and they will have a set of downs, and then the other team will get the ball. Those are the rules as I know. Them's yeah, the rules. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you're here with us as Fuquay Verena. And Middle Creek head to overtime. We've got, we got a guy with a goat tuck up here telling us the rules. <laughs> have you gotten a straight answer about that? About what? What about what? Why does he have a goat on his yeah. head? I'm not really curious, so I apologize for asking. But eh, delusions of grandeur, perhaps. Randy Raglan and Jeb Hall will walk to the center of the field with Matt Lyons and Sean Brown for the coin toss. See if the Middle Creek coaches can come out here and not commit a 15-yarder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, I do want to say you don't have to run off immediately following, do you? It do depends you on why. Off? What are you going to ask me to do? Well, we have not had a post-game coaches, com um, coaches comments for the last few Are you going to make me go out there? It's freaking cold out there, I will dude. give you my jacket. I did not blow my nose into that. <laughs> it's freaking cold. And I'll be happy to give that to you. <laughs> wow. Still people coming into the game, I guess, huh? Looks like a... Oh, pick. picking kids up. Got it. Okay. It's like, boy, they must have been watching uh, and then came on over. Hey, let's see the end of it. Let's watch R3 on the YouTube and go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> no punches thrown yet at the coin toss. That's pretty good. Yeah. Of course, um, for those who don't know, Randy Raglan is a... Uh, an alumnus of Fuquay Verena High School and uh, took the Bengals at the time to the state semifinals. The Bengals were actually the uh, regional champs there and went to the state finals and uh, fell in the finals, but East Regional Champions. What was that, 29 years ago? 28 years ago? 83, 85, so more than that, 30... 38 years ago? He's an old dude. <laughs> so Fuquay Verena will have the ball first and will uh, be pointing to the left end zone. Because they just had the celebration. That's why I was thinking. Like, didn't right. they have that celebration? That was our. Was that the 30th? That was our first year, right? First Back in second. 15, yeah. So it was 85, and it was their 30th. Yeah, wow. so he's that's 35 years ago. He's probably approaching retirement age. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised he's got the energy to commit sideline infractions. <laughs> Had quite a few of them tonight. <laughs> Not sure that they were all his, but yeah, he's responsible. Please they do. Uh, all, they all go on the head coach. That's true. That's a fact. One I can understand, but two that's crossing the line. There's thugs and stooges and it. vandals. That's well done. Um, Crossing the line. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're here all night. Please do make sure to stay tuned for the uh, Bengal postgame show. It's our final Bengal postgame show of the season as the uh, Bengals will conclude the season. No postseason for them uh, after this contest. No postseason uh, games, but there's always a postseason. No postseason for the Bengals. No postseason games. There's always a postseason. Okay, Ryan right, never stops. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Bengal Post Game Show is presented by Winging It Tap House and Grill, and we will have your players and plays of the game. We will have your coaches' comments here in the post game. And right now, Fuquay Verena on offense for the first overtime.
Possession, man in motion, handoff. Connor Sheparel takes it to the left-hand side, gets eight of the 10 yards. 20 to 20. Untimed overtime possession. Ooh, boy, question being raised right now. Do you go for two? I'd wait till the next overtime. Get it right, right. Put it back in the foot of Matt Jones and see if he can straighten some things out. Connor Sheparel gets it again. Does he get in? Yes. No, down to the one. Sorry, I saw one arm go up, and that's uh, that's not enough. You need two. What do you think? What, 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 did you answer your question, PAT, or you go for two? Yeah, I, we say PAT yeah. on the first. We did. You guys have been against the kicking game the entire game, and now all of a sudden you want to. I have a feeling they hey, won't do it. Though. Dance with who brought you guys. If you want to say go for two in the third quarter, you need to say go for two now. <laughs> Chumps. <laughs> We're not wearing red. All right, ball on the one-inch mark on third down. Overtime period number one. Braswell is itching to go. Waiting for the whistle to play. Ready for play, whistled in. Braswell under center. Handoff, Chaparral stopped in the backfield. I'm gonna tell you something, and Jeff Hall, Jeff Hall wanted a timeout. He sure did. And he is, now he doesn't want it. <laughs> you gotta run down there and get him, coach. You can't call it from the 30 when they're standing on the two. <laughs> oh man, so that is a loss of Two. It's going to be two. back to the, about the two-yard line. I think you wanted to call a timeout because they were stacking that side. and yeah. You had no one over the center. So if you get that ball to the quarterback, sneak it. He's walking in for a touchdown. Right. Yeah. Mm. Good, good, good eyes. Nice job, man. Good job. If only you were the quarterback. No, no timeout. Not the quarterback, the, uh, but I was the coach. If you were the quarterback. Oh, now they are going to take it. If you were the quarterback, we probably would have scored there. You would have seen that. I would have gone. You yeah, are they going to give it back? They're giving them the timeout. you got to be wow. kidding me. That is a big play. I mean, that's them rewarding us for the two flags on the touchdown. <laughs> Let's put it that way. If I'm Randy Ragland, I'm taking another 15-yarder. <laughs> you know, you're not kidding. What's it going to hurt? We'll take it now because it gives you half an inch. That makes it a first down, man. That's craziness. Who wow. ever heard of such a thing? Ah, uh, that's – Unreal. I'm, I'm interested to see if they come in that same set. Just the people from the peak of good living run are going to be upset right about that. <laughs> it's more carry, to be honest. I mean, I know they're in Apex, but, like, it's carry light. Yeah. Carry gotta, adjacent. Still got a dump. <laughs> <laughs> that is just unreal. I cannot believe they gave that to him. I'm not arguing it. No, I, not a, it, I mean, hey, the, the <laughs> whole game has gone Fuquay's way tonight. Things have, things had to fall in Fuquay's uh, favor tonight, and they really have. Yeah. You take a look. We didn't really look at the schedule of, of uh, Middle Creek here, at least on the air. Their losses, their three losses on the season, Wake Forest, 52-6, to six, Apex Friendship, 35-14, to 14, and Garner Magnet, 29-21. Talk more about that here in a second. Third down and goal from the one. And Randy Raglan now is possible. I think he is not quite sure. He's probably not aware it's third down. Not aware <laughs> that they gave him back the third down. I mean, down. they did it like seemed like in between like when the team, teams were going to the yeah. sideline, so they could have just, Well, you know, and he was over talking to a player, so I'm not at all surprised that he's unaware of the fact that they gave him back that third down. I, that's a I huge gotta feel like call. somebody would have been talking into his headphones. I, you would think so. So anyway, while they uh, discuss this, and and Randy earns his next fifteen yarder, um, <laughs> those three <coughs> losses, Wake Wake Forest, I, I get it. Wake Forest is what it is. The other two losses, are Apex eye-opening. Friendship, they're eye opening. They are eye opening. Absolutely. They're. Yeah, they're, that's really what they are. They are at 30 in the adjusted max preps rankings. It's a huge rank. I mean, yeah. to be fighting now for fourth place in the SWAC, and that really says something. Third down here and one, really inches to go. Connor Sheparel goes to the right-hand side this time and in for six. A little extra pushing and shoving as the ball came out there at the end. No flags thrown. That was the easy part. Yeah. 
That was the easy part. Now we got to get a stop. And they are going to go for two as the kicking game has just been struggling tonight. But I'll tell you what, the two-point PATs have not been any better. I really want to see them take this outside. I mean, I know Chevrolet yep. up, up the gut's been successful. I'll tell you right now, they're making a mistake. And and why? So why not ask to put it on one of the hash? Why not ask? Because yeah. you can do that you can for do a PAT. That. So why not ask to put it left or right and use the wide side of the field? Yeah, you, I, I mean, just the set that Middle Creek's given. If you run because this up the gut, it's going to get Because you keep it in the middle, it gives you more options. Perfect. Yeah. To Perfect. the left-hand side. Outside. Reaches for the pylon. Yes. That was a smart call. Outside. <laughs> Run it outside. Genius. Run it Genius outside. Genius goes two. Put the pressure on Middle Creek on the first possession. 28-22. brilliant. Fuquay Arena up on Middle Creek. They will force a two-point conversion if Middle Creek gets it into the end zone. Woo! That was hey, that was the easy part. Now you got to get a stop get here. A stop. Too many years. This is the year. Too many years. It's been too many years. Getting the monkey off the back. It has Bengals on defense. Two turnovers already tonight by this Fuquay Arena defense. Randy Raglan is out on the field right now. The, the play has not been whistled in yet. Ready for play is now in. Usually the old guys are telling other people to stay out there long. <laughs> <laughs> Brown looks to the sideline to get the play call. Twins receivers to either side. Prenovo switches to the right-hand side. Pass to the right. Completes and into the end zone quickly. That's a quick 10 yards on the pass complete to Kyle Isle. Put it behind you. This is the play. This is the play that matters. That this play didn't play. matter. That, that's yeah. right. That's, that's, that's the runner on third. The one on first is the one that matters. That's you got to right. get this one. That's right. Two-point conversion would force a second overtime. You know what it I would like to see? 28-26. I'd, like, I'd like to see Middle Creek kick it here. <laughs> I'd love that. Expecting a timeout from Middle Creek. And now the line judge on the far side. We'll come to the white hat, not sure what uh, is going on. A timeout will be called by Middle Creek to get this play call in. This is a great position to be in, I will tell you that, to have yeah. that two-point cu uh, cushion. Well, and the Middle Creek offense isn't like a short distance offense, what I'm trying to say. That's they like a good to spread point. it out. They like yep. to have space. I mean, right now you've got – the field all crunched up. You got the back line in your favor. Use that goal line as the 12th man. That's right. Three yards of history right here. That's uh, that's what the Bengals did last week against Garner. That's when that uh, that critical fumble came out. Used the, I think it was from the at least the three, if not the one, using that goal line as your 12th man. Fuquay Arena. And Middle Creek, first overtime, 28-26. Right, let's go defense! Middle Creek going for two. <laughs> Stay tuned for the Bengal Post Game Show, presented by Winging It, Tap House and Grill, and of course, Fuqua Arena High School Football on the Bengal R3 Sports Network, presented by Krista Absher and the Absher Realty Group. Brown looks to the sideline for the play call. Say that differently. It's winging at Tap House and the Grill now. New name, not Bar and Grill anymore. They're the best bar none. That's good. 28-26. Overtime for the game. Brown rolls out. Pressure. Thrown. Back of the end zone. And it's good. That's it. Fuquay Arena has not done it since 2010. 11 straight victories by Middle Creek. That's it. And Middle Creek will not go to the postseason. Bengals 28. 
Mustang 26. Wipe off the rest of the schedule. Bengals are 1 0. Stay tuned for the Bengal post game show presented by Winging It Tap House and Grill. Comments from the victorious head coach of the Bengals, Jeb Hall, presented by the Strong Center for Excellence. We will have your players of the game, plays of the game. That's going to be one of them. And we will wrap up this contest for you tonight. Fuquay Arena 28, Middle Creek 26 on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Woo. If you're looking for a realtor and want to save thousands, call me. I'm Krista Absher of the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty. With our Heroes to Homeowners program, first responders, nurses, teachers, and veterans qualify for a 25% commission rebate to thank you for your service and sacrifice. As an Air Force veteran with 13 years of local real estate experience, our mission is to help fellow veterans and local heroes achieve their dream of homeownership. Call me, Krista Absher, 919-355-SOLD. That's 919-355-SOLD. Or visit theabsherrealtygroup.com. Protecting your family, your home, your car is extremely important. One company that has been doing just that in Fuquay Arena since 1956 is Dickens Insurance Agency. Their agents are tried and tested and are able to handle any questions you may have regarding your insurance needs. And if you combine your personal auto, homeowners, and life insurance, let the savings start rolling in. Visit Dickens Insurance Agency at 402 Wake Chapel Road or online at dickensinsurance.com. Mike from Cary says on Yelp that Wingin' It Tap House and Grill is great as always, service is fast and prompt, I really like how the place is after the remodel. Camilla says, I had the wasabi salad and it was surprisingly excellent for a wing place. Five stars for both food and service. We'll be back. In the Five Point Center next to Sheets on the east side of Fuquay Arena, search Wingin' It Tap House and Grill on Facebook for a menu and directions. Welcome into the Bengal Post Game Show, presented by Wingin' It Tap House and Grill. Let's wrap up tonight's contest with final stats and analysis. Let's head back inside the broadcast booth. Alongside the coach, Jim Cole, here's Rand Northam. Fuquay Arena with the win tonight. We have not said that in a Fuquay Arena Middle Creek game in the entirety of our broadcasts while we've been here since 2015. The Bengals have not taken a victory against Middle Creek since 2010. That was the last time Fuquay Arena beat Middle Creek. Jeb Hall has not beaten Middle Creek in his tenure as head coach at Fuquay Arena High School. That is all changed. The streak is over, and the Bengals take a 1-0 record into next season. The rest of the season does not matter. They finish 3-9 on the year, but 1-0 in the game that counts. And the Easter Bowl, they are presenting the trophy to them right now as the Bengals will head to the Orange Crush and receive the Beng the uh, Easter Bowl trophy. Boy, how about that? It is here at Fuquay Arena for 365 days. Oh boy. Exciting one, and we're glad that you joined us. <laughs> it is tear-worthy tonight. As the Bengals win it 28-26, to 26, we are glad that you are along here with us. We hope that you will stay tuned for comments from the head coach of the Bengals, Jeb Hall. He might not have a voice left. Senior night tonight. Boy, talk about it for... Um, Matthew Lyons, what a night he had uh, putting the Bengals on his shoulders tonight. 113 yards for Matthew Lyons on 17 carries. He had a touchdown. He had the two-point conversion as well. Jacob Braswell, four, four for 11 for 25 yards, also six carries for 14 yards. Some great read options tonight. Jackson Barker, only a sophomore. He's got great time coming ahead for him. Eight carries, 62 yards, a reception for one yard as well. Ethan Burke, two receptions for 31 yards. He also had an interception. And the uh, final interception, we'll have to go back and look at game film. We were so excited we did not see the number of who pulled that one down. Three turnovers tonight 
against Middle Creek. Again, this is a Middle Creek team, 30th in the adjusted max preps rankings. Huge. Tomorrow, uh, sorry, Sunday, I believe, is Selection Sunday. We'll see what the postseason uh, has in store. Now, keep it classy, Fuquay. Yep. And the seniors getting involved here and uh, keeping things a bit calmer, trying to settle things down and make sure that this stays cool. You got to know how to win and win right. And Fuquay Verena got the win tonight. You see the final stats there. Live stats presented to you by Creative Wiring Solutions. This is the Bengal Post Game Show presented by Winging It Tap House and Grill. Trip Advisor has winged it at four and a half stars. But don't just take their word for it. Stop by and check it out for yourself. On Main Street in the Five Point Center next to Sheets. Search Winging It Tap House and Grill on Facebook for a menu and directions. It was a tough season for Fuquay Verena, but as we've been talking about all night long, this erases all of that, and we're glad that you were here with us to enjoy it. We'll continue on with more of the Bengal Post Game Show presented by Winging It Tap House and Grill as we continue. Window effects plays of the game, and we will have your players of the game, offensive and defensive, presented by P. Castles Law, PLLC. 28-26, Fuquay Verena with the win. More of the Bengal Post Game Show after this timeout on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Sitting at home watching the Bengals tonight? Why not join your fellow Bengal fans at Winging It Tap House and Grill? They'll have the game on each week while they bring you their signature bone-in or boneless wings with 21 choices of sauce. Or maybe you'd like to try their fish and chips. How about their beef sliders or their chicken sliders? You've got to try the grilled ribeye. Or try something from the sea with a grilled tilapia. Winging at Tap House and Grill, located in the Five Point Center next to Sheets. After more than 20 years in the corporate world, Pam Castles decided to step out on her own, establishing P. Castles Law, PLLC. She's available for commercial transactional legal services, such as contracts for purchases and sales of goods and services and non-disclosure and non-compete agreements and transportation contracts. Contact Pam at 919-534-5735 or Pam at pcastleslaw.com. P. Castles Law, this year's sponsor of the Players of the Game. Creative Wiring Solutions has been a leader in home theater installation since 2002. They specialize in home integration, structured wiring of smart homes, house audio, noise control, security, monitoring, central vacuum systems, and so much more. From the Triangle to the Coast, Creative Wiring Solutions proudly serves throughout all of North Carolina. They recognize the special care and attention to detail needed when designing your home entertainment. Expect the best. You know window effects for the smooth factory finish they do on your vehicle tinting. But did you know that same high quality work can also benefit your home or business? Window tinting for your home or office will reduce heat, cut down on glare, and stop floors and furniture from fading, saving you money and protecting your assets. Don't know whether you need window tinting? Contact Window Effects today for a free estimate. Search for Window Effects on Facebook and tell them R3 Sports sent you. Final score, 28-26. Ran Northam alongside the coach, Jim Cole, who just came back from the field, and uh, he's going to give us a recap of Coach's comments presented by the Strong Center for Excellence. Uh, I'm sure he is a lot more of screaming. than ecstatic. A lot of screaming. <laughs> uh, raspy, hoarse voice. I'm sure. Um, talked to the guys today about showing composure, about fighting, uh, about being smart, but fighting uh, on every play. And, and like we talked about, you know, the 15 yard penalties, uh, a lot of the unsportsman likes, and the turnovers on Middle Creek were, were the difference. Uh, I asked him about the, getting that third down. He said, he, he said it, first of all, it was legit. He said the, the, the line judge had been looking at me. He saw that I caught it, and, and Coach Hall had been working him the whole game and got what he needed out of that. Um, huge win for the boys. Nice trophy out there. Big presentation. Um, Great way to, to wrap up the season. Yeah, and he, he said things are not as bad as they seem at the Quay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, think he's, I think he's ready to kick off a, a great uh, offseason of work and really get things back to where you know, we expect them to be for the Bengals. 
Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, taking a quick look at standings here, a uh, couple of scores we've got for you. So Garner gets the win tonight, uh, improves to 6-5, and five and gets the second automatic bid, improving to 5-1, and one, a tie with Holly Springs. Holly Springs with the win over Garner in the regular season, so they get the uh, number one automatic bid. We're looking for some final scores from Holly Springs to see if they got the win over Hillside tonight, which will, um, uh, yeah, 20 to 6 in the third quarter. So it looks like they're going to uh, get that victory tonight. So Holly Springs will improve to 10 and 1. Um, Apex Friendship falls to third place at 4 and 2, 7 and 4 overall. They are likely to get an at large bid uh, because of their adjusted max preps rankings. They'll drop a little bit because of this loss to Garner tonight. Um, so we'll see how that uh, rolls out. Middle Creek falls to 3 and 3. Fuquay Verena improves to 3 and 3. But with this win tonight, Fuquay Verena has the uh, tiebreaker over Middle Creek. Last and thing he said jump. was, maybe we can uh, wake up tomorrow morning and get lucky. <laughs> yeah, he told me that in the in the um, uh, pregame. He said that um, you obviously will jump a lot in your max prep rankings with a win over the 30th ranked uh, in the max preps rankings. You got to jump a whole heck of a lot. You got to jump probably. He thinks 48. Um, I think you got to jump in the low 40s probably. Uh, even to get that. So it's a big jump. They're at 66 right now. Um, to get in with a 3-8 and eight record would be interesting. Um, and I, as I was talking with Evan about it, you would be the last team in. <laughs> it has it to be. It would be, be interesting. But I remember times when, when 0 and 11 teams would sure, get in. Sure, And crazy to me, you drive across the, straight, across the state and, and get drugged by 60 points and drive back. It's really a, a I didn't understand it, but that's right. the way it would be at, a, at one point in time. Well, this is – you mentioned it. This is a, a huge morale boost for Fuqua Arena. This is something to build on in the postseason. I, I thought about it as the weeks went on, as people – as the attrition was happening and, and people were leaving the team. How do you take this, whatever record it is, into the postseason, keep the players that you have, and then still try to go out and find some more talent? This right here – helps that conversation and helps that fight so very much. Yeah, just the the chemistry it builds, the unity, the sense of the sense of family. It it does does nothing but help you prepare for next year. And it kind of you know solidifies what what the Bengals are all about. Well, let's talk uh, players of the game here, coach. Uh, offensive player of the game presented by P Castle's Law PLLC. I got to put my throw my hat in the ring for Matthew Lyons. He had a big touchdown there at the end. He had um, the big two point conversion as well. Obviously, the the blockers and the offensive line and all of those go into that as well. But uh, certainly throwing my hat in the ring for the senior Matthew Lyons. Cannot disagree with you on that one. The defensive player of the game. I'm struggling with only because I'm not sure who picked that ball <laughs> off uh, for that two point conversion. Was it Ethan Burke? That would be two interceptions for him. Um, so that uh, I think that pretty well solidifies yeah, defensive absolutely. player of the game absolutely. for Ethan Burke, a guy who has been a clutch receiver all season long, coming in on defense, getting two interceptions. Um, great to have your leading receiver in on defense in your cornerback position or safety position and, and getting that. So defensive player of the game to Ethan Burke tonight. Um, and we'll leave. I'm remembering this correctly. Yeah, a junior. So he and Braswell will continue on next season. Great to have both of them back. Plays of the game. Um, you got an onside kick. You got a big interception. You've got a number of turnovers that the Bengals got, especially that last one there at the end. Yeah, the PAT uh, had to be it. Yeah, and, and we said it before, the, the, that was the play. The touchdown right. didn't really matter. Right. It was that PAT that we had to stop, and we did what we needed to do. All right, Luke, let's catch us up a little bit. Um, the... Um, Plays of the game uh, presented by P. Castle's Law, PLLC, and tell us about them, please. Yes. Thank you for paying better attention than me. And how about plays of the game presented by Window Effects? We'll get to the live stats here in just a minute. Thank you very much, and uh, our live stats, you've been watching them hopefully all night with us. They're presented to you by Creative Wiring Solutions. 
personalized service, Creative Wiring Solutions offers a wide variety of products and services, including speakers, projector screens, flat screens, and so much more. They'll customize packages and accessories for your individual needs. Expect the best. Call Creative Wiring Solutions to start your install today. 919-557-6900 or visit creativewiring.com. One more timeout to take, and then we will wrap things up here for our season of Fuqua Arena High School football. Bengals win it tonight, 28-26 on the Bengal R3 Sports Network. Now here we've got a spacious kitchen. Honey, this house is beautiful. I think it's the one. The it just came on the market. Made. I'm glad Krista was able to get us in here quickly. Krista was right. With how quickly houses are selling, it's important to know the market and be prepared to act fast. With the Absher Realty Group, powered by Fathom Realty, we'll help you find your dream home. With Krista Absher, the important thing to remember is you come first. She works with honor and integrity, educating you every step of the home buying process. Visit theabsherrealtygroup.com today. Hey, have you finished writing that presentation? Nah, I'm just winging it. Hey, have you made our travel plans yet? Eh, I'm just winging it. Wilson, have you finished the big pitch for our client today? Uh, no, sir. I'm just winging it. Winging it has its place, and that's not when making important life decisions. It's at the Five Point Center in Fuquay Marina on Main Street, next to Sheets. Open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Search Winging It Tap House and Grill on Facebook. Creative Wiring Solutions has been a leader in home theater installation since 2002. They specialize in home integration, structured wiring of smart homes, house audio, noise control, security, monitoring, central vacuum systems, and so much more. From the Triangle to the Coast, Creative Wiring Solutions proudly serves throughout all of North Carolina. They recognize the special care and attention to detail needed when designing your home entertainment. Expect the best. 28-26, the final score. Fuquay Verena wins it and uh, takes it over rival Middle Creek tonight. Again, something that has not been said since 2010. 11 straight wins for the Middle Creek Mustangs. That includes postseasons, uh, multiple games in, in different seasons. The Heaster Bowl goes to Fuquay Verena and Jeb Hall tonight. You've been seeing his work all season long, Nate Perez. He's going to bring you one of our uh, live reads here before we close things out tonight. Nate? The Strong Center for Excellence is a nonprofit organization providing team, group, and individual skills training in league play for basketball and football, serving ages 6 to 18 with an ability ranges from beginner to those preparing for college recruitment. Contact the Strong Center for Excellence at info at strongcenter.org or visit thestrongcenter.org. Thank you very much, Nate. Thank you for all that you've done uh, here this season as well. And uh, we appreciate all your work on the camera. We're going to wrap things up here. Coach, you want to come uh, give some final words before we – no, you're good, huh? That's it. Get out of here. Uh, Coach's comments are pre presented by the Strong Center for Excellence, and uh, we appreciate their sponsorship. Nate, jeez, uh, I did it again. Luke, uh, one more read for us before we close this one out here. Thank you. Have you gotten your all-sport season passed yet? The Fuquay Verena Athletic Booster Club's goal is to provide support and information to students, faculty, parents, and the community about Bengal athletics. Get your membership today. Visit fehsboosterclub.com. Well, as I mentioned, this uh, season is all worth it for that win right there. Bengals will take a winning streak into next year. We appreciate you joining us for this game and all season long. For everybody at the Bengal R3 Sports Network, want to say a big thanks to Coach Hall, Coach Mountfort, everybody at Fuquay Verena for supporting us yet again in our fifth season. It certainly ended in an exciting fashion. The Bengals win tonight 28-26 for the coach, Jim Cole, and myself, Rand Northam. Big thanks to Evan Rogers, Luke Anderson, Nate Perez. We say good night for one final time here this season. Bengals win it 28-26 over the Mustangs. Good night from Willow Spring. This has been Fuquay Marina High School Football on the Bengal R3 Sports Network, presented by Krista Absure and the Absure Realty Group, online at theabsurerealtygroup.com. The play-by-play -play announcer of the Bengal R3 Sports Network is Rand Northam. Color analyst, Jim Cole. The announcer is Ron Stutz. The statistician and host to Bengals at the Half is Evan Rogers. The producer is Luke Anderson. The videographer is Nate Perez. Bengals football is also brought to you by the Aviator Smokehouse at the corner of Broad and Stewart and online at aviatorbrew.com slash smokehouse. 
by Dickens Insurance Agency, proudly serving the Fuqua Verena community since 1956. By Wingin' It Tap House and Grill, located in the Five Point Center next to Sheets on the east side of Fuqua Verena. By Window Effects, give your ride that touch that will make heads turn. By P. Castle's Law, this year's sponsor of the Players of the Game. By the Strong Center for Excellence, empowering youth on and off the court and field. And by Creative Wiring Solutions, the area's leader in custom home entertainment. Any duplication or rebroadcast of this transmission without written consent from R3 Productions is strictly prohibited. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the commentators and do not necessarily represent or reflect the official policy or position of R3 Productions. This has been a presentation of R3 Productions.